If you've thought you've seen all the uses of Excel, then wait until you get a look at this coffee shop and cafe point of sale software built in Excel. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for freelancers. And today I'm gonna to show you how to create this incredible point of sale application complete with added cup sizes, features, formats that you've never seen before. We're gonna do all of that and a whole lot more. In fact, we're gonna do it all from scratch. Every format, every formula, every feature complete with coding and design. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I am super excited to bring you this week's training, a coffee shop and cafe POS, point of sale software. This is a really incredible training because we've got so many features. In fact, we're gonna do it entirely from scratch. That means all the screen design and all of the coding from scratch right in front of you. So it's a training you're just not gonna to wanna to miss. You're gonna learn so much by the end of this training, you're gonna be able to create this coffee shop and cafe POS for yourself. In fact, this template is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down below and we'll get you set up with your name and email. We'll get that sent over to you. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the like button and the notification icon. That'll ensure that you get these trainings notified each and every week when I create these incredible trainings using Microsoft Excel. In fact, I love to create these trainings for you. It's what I do. I wanna make you not just good with Excel, but successful with Excel. And that's my goal is to teach you how to create these applications. In fact, I've got a mentorship program that'll help you with just that. In my mentorship program, I go over every step, every single phase of the process, whether you're defining or you're designing your applications. We're gonna teach you how to go through the develop and the deployment stage. So all four of those stages we're gonna be going Inside that course, I'm going to be creating an incredible accounting application, and that's going to be a full-featured accounting application that you also get with the course. So I'll include the link down below. It would be great to have you in the mentorship course. So we'll get that set up for you. Go ahead and click the link down below. All right, let's get started on this training. I want to give you an overview of the features, and then what we're going to do is we're going to start out with this blank worksheet. So first, I want to show you the sample, how it's going to work, what we're going to be designing, give you a little bit of a rundown. Then we're going to change workbooks, and we're going to be designing it and coding it from scratch. So it's going to take a little bit of a while. So make sure you grab your beverage of choice. I don't want you to miss a step of this. I might move a little fast. So feel free to slow the video down, watch it as many times as you want. It's always going to be available right here on YouTube. All right. So basically what we have is we have six different categories. We have all the categories in each category. We've got about 10 or so items brewed coffee. So keep that in mind. As we select on it, it's going to show just those items, smoothies, bakeries, and then roasted beans. So when you have a specific category and you want to select on an item, let's go and go to a brand new order so we can see that. When we select on a brewed coffee, we can choose the size. Notice automatically it's here on the receipt, uh, brewed coffee medium. We can select a large or small, and that's going to change the description. We can also have add-ons, whether we want maybe no sugar or maybe we want added uh, soy milk, or maybe we want light uh, chocolate syrup. We can have all those, 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 those get added onto those items, right? So also if it is a cold beverage, so we're gonna show a different type of cup design, small or large, we can choose the love. And again, just with the add-ons. Now these add-ons have different types and things like that. Bakeries would have a different type of atom. We've got a few. If I select a bakery, we can we can choose to have it uh, heated up or on a plate so we can have those items. And roast beans would have their own type of add-in. So add-ins are similar. They don't have any sizes on those, although we could certainly add sizes, bags of beans, so it's certainly possible. So you could choose whether you want ground coffee or whole bean and things like that. Once you have your order up, you want to make a payment. We've got a total of a $34. So maybe we're going to make a $40 payment. We just enter the payment here and enter the payment amount. It's fully touchscreen compatible. You can print the order, dine in or take away if we want. Just selecting here, it's going to make that change. Print the order, it's gonna to print to your default printer or whatever printer you set up for it, and that's mine is Snagit. And then we're gonna to go to the next order. We also have a payment type, whether it's cash, credit card, or gift card, it's gonna change right here. We can look up, so we can go to the next order. We can look up any order just by entering the order number here. It's gonna pull up a previous order. And so that's pretty much it. It's a really cool, I can't really, it's a really cool application. Real quick, in the admin, we've got some default. We have a location where those pictures are. We have item types. These are the six item types. 
whether we're charging sales tax or not. We have the default size. For example, when you have a brand new drink, what is the default size? What is your default payment, cash, credit card, or gift card? What is the location? Is it takeaway or dine-in? And then we have just some information for some pictures, right? Small, hot drinks have separate pictures. Cold drinks have separate pictures. So if we take a look inside the coffee, we see in the tea, if we have a cold tea, we've got some different drink pictures. If we have a hot tea, we've got the hot container. So kind of a nice way to do that. Otherwise, we've got order items. This keeps track of, uh, let's go to the orders. Let's go, we have our, our orders, right? Whether it's been paid or not. All of our orders here, the date, location, the total. The individual items on there, we have that. We have the shop items, and those means all the shop items separated by category. Remember, we have category. If it's a drink type, is it hot or cold? And what type is it as a drink, or is it food, or being something like that? We have a, a small, a medium, and a large. We have different sales prices located. And so that means if we have a coffee, if we, so let's take a look at a brand new order here. And if we choose a green tea and we choose a, we have a green tea for 354, the medium, the small is 295, the large is 425. So the price changes automatically as we change the size. And uh, certain add-ins uh, could be free or they could be additions. So if we want to add fresh milk, it's a 75 cent charge. So keep that in mind. Obviously, if we want an espresso shot inside our tea, uh, it's 50 cents. So we can add prices onto those add-ins, which is nice. And so we've got a list of add-ins here. So and then a price associated with that. All right, so that's pretty much it, the overall. What I wanna do is I wanna get started right away on this. If you take a look at this design, I get some designs, ideas. A lot of you ask, how do you get your design ideas? Well, lately I've been using uh, Midjourney. Midjourney's really, really cool. Let's take a look at this here. Midjourney's an AI engine, and I got some of the ideas from the designs. If we look here, uh, I, not that, that's kind of a nice house, but that nothing. So I decided I wanted, you know, or I knew what I was doing. So I put in mid journey and I just put in, I want a beautiful yet simple point of sale for a coffee shop, light uh, brown and uh, cream colors. So it kind of gave me the, a good reference to go on. And a lot of you have asked me, hey, how, where do you get your designs from? So I got a lot of them from here. And that's where I got the color codes and the color ranges from here. And I, there were some backgrounds that I didn't like too much, but it kind of gave me some backgrounds. I was thinking of going with a background like this, but I chose something simple. So you can, it's kind of cool. And then also I did the logo here too, the logo that you see here. Uh, down here, here's a, so I, I chose a logo. I want a single color dark brown coffee shop logo. So I chose this upper left logo. And then what I did is in another uh, photo, I just changed the, the wording of that. So we got a logo, so which we'll be adding. So I did all that in Mid Journey. So keep that in mind. Mid Journey is used on a platform called Discord. So this is Mid Journey on top of Discord. And this is the Mid Journey bot. Okay, so I just want to let you know real quick, that's a really helpful tool that I use. And I'm here to share all the tools. Okay, so this is the sample. What we're going to do is we're going to save this. In fact, I'm going to move it over to the side, my other screen here. And that way it's going to leave us with a blank sheet. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start off on this. Everything else is the same. That means the admin's the same, the orders, the data. So everything else is pretty much here what we have, but we just have a blank sheet. We're going to be designing the sheet and we're going to be doing all the code from scratch. Sometimes I do both. Sometimes I do design. Today we're doing all the code. A lot of you asked me uh, for code. So we're going to try to, we're going to do that for sure. And then we'll see how long it takes. Hopefully it won't take too long. All right. If I stop talking and start program, it'll be quick. Let's go ahead and drop this down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make these first two columns admin. So I'm just going to give those a, a unique color. If you've seen this, my trainings before I do this in almost every training, I just have a few merge incentives that can help us for with the formatting, some formatting. So we're going to call this coffee shop, same name and a cafe uh, POS. Okay. Um, and then what I want to do is I'll give it a background soon. So there's not a whole lot going on the screen. So the VBA is going to take care of a lot of the screen things. I've got some more things. I've got an item size and some information. So here's going to be all of our images. We will going to need a sample. I've got some admin here that we're going to be adding in here. So we're going to have a search order up here in Q. So Q3 uh, is going to take, that's going to be our search order, search order field. So we'll put that in here, search order and I'm going to put a background here and then we'll put in some buttons here. So a search order and I also want to know the register number. There's not a whole lot of fields on this screen and we've got an order summary here. So we'll put in order summary. You just see some of the formattings are already set. It's going to help things move things a little bit quicker because my videos are already long and a lot of you have said, hey, I want shorter videos, but then you want coding from scratch. So I'm in a bit of a pickle here. <laughs> How to do I do everything and keep it quick location 
take simpler applications is always is always easier but you know I have ideas and my ideas are not simple subtotal so we're going to put a subtotal we want to know that in that's going to be a subtotal of all the receipts and then I want to know tax right if there's going to be tax tax is going to be based on the admin whether we're charging tax or not the order total which is simply the subtotal plus the tax going to have that in there and that's going to be located right in R10 okay next up after order total I want to know the payment type what is that the payment type and then after that I want total paid how much did they pay paid and then the change whatever change do based on what they pay change okay so we have that and then um there's not too much in as far as the fields we've got some I'll add some borders around here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the background to start giving us with this theme so I'm going to do the page layout I'm going to click on the background and I've got a background uh, that I created and I'll just pull it out right here and it's this background right here that you saw okay so that's our background we probably won't need the grid lines too much so I'm going to just click view and we don't need the grid lines for that okay so our order summary is just this we're going to use a, a consistent color uh, that brown color so I'm going to use control one and what that's going to is going to bring up this border I'm going to use this salt this is our brown I'm going to use this around salt all the way around here and then the law put some smaller lines in the middle and I want this dotted line in the middle here centering that okay so very good so that's good these are the only two fields that are going to be user input if they want to so we can add that here but otherwise it's pretty much touch screen ready these are going to be search orders I'm going to do the same thing here and then with the borders a little bit slightly different I'll probably do a thick border all the way around inside and outside and then the dotted line on the inside okay so that looks good we get the idea that we'll put a search order a register summary here we're gonna have some buttons down here so we have a lot of buttons a lot of shapes not a whole lot however this section here from M all the way to O I want that to be in white because that's going to be our receipt so I'm just going to go all the way down and put that as a white background that's going to be our so our receipt's going to go here we're going to have our logo and some information here Freder will put the coffee and logo so let's go ahead and add that uh, logo here so I'm going to have it twice so I'm going to insert the pictures and I've got a logo here so I'm going to insert it and then I'm going to just bring it over here and then bring it a little bit smaller here I'm going to duplicate that using control D and I'm going to bring a smaller logo and we're going to put it right up here okay very good so I like that that's kind of got gives us a nice idea for the receipt everything's looking good okay we'll add in the name so that's going to go in M9 let's make this a little bit smaller here the logo we don't need it that big and I'll put it in the center this one we're going to call here this is going to be Freder's Coffee Company uh there's a little bit of formatting that's already done already that's going to help things move a little quicker uh company so that's the name of our coffee company and then I want to put, put the location here south east store whatever it's fine here okay all right next up what I want to do is I want to put the order number here so order number is going to go here and I also want to know the register number register now the register number and the order number are both linked to different fields so the register number is simply going to be equals we'll put equals and it's going to be whatever is in here so if I put the register number three four five right two four five whatever it's going to go right here that's exactly what I want the top of our receipt we'll put a black dotted line on that so I'll do uh, control one on that it's going to launch that editor there formatting and then we'll do alignment at border here I'm going to use a dotted line here just the basic dotted line and I'm going to put that up here that should be sufficient okay so I like that it's going to separate our first item will go here in M13 and our add-ins can go in column N now what we'll do is we'll focus on a little bit of the admin because I've got a, a good amount of admin uh, fields here the first is I want to know I'm going to put a search in here let's say we put in search item uh, search order one I want to know the row that's associated with that search whatever they put it and I want to put it in here so we're going to call this search order row and then next up I also want to know the selected category is it what category is it that could be helpful select category and I also want to know the selected order number and next up I want to know the order database row what is the order database row if I have an order let's say I want I have order number one I want to know that's on row four or row five or so so on and so forth so that's important the database row I also want to know the next order ID next order ID okay so I'm going to give those a green color and because uh, those are all specific to the orders so I'm going to give that and then I'll just uh, put some borders all the way around them okay next up I want 
specific for the selected item. Remember, if we remember, we have some categories and then we select coffee or whatever items in column, generally called ENF. So I want to know information about the item we selected. So we're going to put selected item ID. What is the ID? Remember, every single shop item has their own ID. So I want to know what ID was, what ID was selected. That's going to go in inside B6. We're going to put that there. Inside, we're going to know the selected item database row. That means that row, that shop item row, this right here, I want to know what row is green tea on. Is it row seven? So that's important. I also want to know the select item type. What is the type? Selected item type. Is it a drink or is it a bread or whatever? And I also want to know selected, I want to know the drink type, selected item. If it's a drink, drink type, is it like hot or cold or something like that, right? So I want to know that. And next up, I want to know the selected size. If we're selecting small, medium, large, I need to know that. That's very important. So we're going to put selected size. That's going to go inside B10. We're also going to set the default size based on whatever the user selected in the admin. Okay, also inside 11, row 11, we're going to put the selected item price. Selected item price. I want to know the price. And that's going to be based on a formula. And I want to know the selected item row. So I want to know what row. So that means what row here. Selected item. Let's put in order row just so we know. I want to be specific with the order, order row. So what row on the order? First one's going to be in row 13. So what 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 row is that? That's important. And we'll explain a little bit why. Okay, so these are all associated with the item that we're working on. So I'm going to give those borders. I'm going to give those a different color. Remember, so when we select coffee or tea or whatever, whatever specific coffee, that's going to focus on there. Then we focus on add-ins. If you remember on our other screen, we have add-ins, right? Sugar or whipped cream or whatever. Those are add-ins. So I want to know information about that. So I want to know the selected add-in type, right? Our add-ins have different types. If we remember, we take a look inside our admins. We have drinks, beans, food, and different things. So I want to know the item type. So we're going to select the add-in type. That's going to go there in B13. I want to know the selected add-in id add-ins have their own unique id and i need to know that and i also want to know the, the database row selected add-in database row associated with that add-in so that's very important and i also want to know the price for that selected add-in price that's going to be a formula it's going to look up that price and if we're going to if it's no in other words we're, we're excluding it i think the price would be zero but if we're adding it in it could be a price some add-ins are free right some you know getting it heated wouldn't have a cost generally you know ice cubes shouldn't be well maybe i don't know so but you can put it in here so well i'm wondering the price that's associated with that okay so great so those are all associated with the add-ins we're going to give those a unique color this light blue here next up i want to have some information just for the order information so I want to know a tax string. We'll call it tax string, tax string. And I'll explain that in a minute. And basically, it's the information associated with the tax. It'll say the name tax and the amount of the tax with that and with a percentage. So it's going to be like a string. It's going to say tax 8.5%. So I want that to put that right here. Also associated, I want to know the total paid. Now, I've got that information here, but I want to put it also in another. So I want to know the total paid because this particular is not going to be formatted, but this one's going to be formatted. So we have paid here and paid here. And lastly, the last one is the order date and time. So I'm going to put that here. So I want to know the order date and time. And I'm going to also give those a unique color because those are just all associated with the order. So I'm going to use a blue, a little bit of a darker blue here. Okay, great. So that's all the admin we have. We're going to save our work so far. And we're going to take a look at some information. I've got some named range that we can go ahead and look through those and see how that's going to help us in this application. So we're going to go into the formulas, name manager, and take a look at some of the named range. I've got, we'll start at the top. I've got an add-in ID. If we tab using the tab key, we see that we've got an uh, offset formula. There are almost always offset formulas because as our uh, data increases, so will our named range. So we're using offset, and that's going to be for the add-in ID. I also want to have another name range for the add-in price because we're going to need to look up that price based on the ID. So I'm going to need one for the add-in price. And the criteria is those are just automated based on advanced filters so we can get rid of those. I have one for default size. The default size is in the admin screen, whether it's small, medium, or large. We've got it. And the extractor also associated automated with advanced filters, so we can skip those. And we have an item drink type. Now, what is the item drink type? That is going to be based on this here, D3, all the way through the shop. Let's take a look at that. That's going to be based on the drink types here. So we see hot, cold, hot, based on the drink types. Okay, next up, we also have the item ID. What is the associated? These are all items. Our shop items are all items. 
we have an ID associated with that. We also have an item type. What is the type? Is it a drink? Is it a bean food? So we have that. We also have the item prices. Now these are three different columns. Keep in mind that item prices are associated with three different columns, small, medium, and large. Some items only have a single price and that would be the first column. Other items such as drinks have three different prices. We have an order ID. That's a named range I spoke of earlier, one for the order ID. And also, let's say we have one for the picture folder. That's going to be in the admin. And this picture folder is going to be where all of our pictures are located. So I'll go over that. And that means our, we have our picture for our items. We have pictures for our add-ins. And we have pictures for a bunch of things. So that's going to be all located. And you have to have that folder there so we can map that. Program. Print area is automated. Size range here. The size range is basically small, medium, large. It's just the size here for the shop items. Tax option is based on the unit. Is it a yes or no? Are we charging taxes? It's simply a yes or no. And we have the tax rate. Lastly, what is the rate of that tax? Okay, very good. So that's all we have to do. That's all we have to do for our named ranges. Let's start filling some of these in. First of all, I want to know what row is associated with this search order. So I'm going to do equals if error, and I want to run a match. And it's going to be match. What am I looking for? I'm looking for whatever the user has entered in this search order, right in R3. And I'm looking up based on the order ID. So I'm going to type an order ID. I want an exact match. So I'm going to do comma zero. And I want to know the rows associated. So I'm adding three because the first one starts on row four if there's an error i'm going to show empty and that's going to tell me that search uh that order number one is on row four so if i look here and i see that order number one so that's good i have that there perfect okay i want to know the selected category we'll just that's vba is going to take care of that for us so we know what category has been selected so we can put anything vba will take care of that there's no formula the selected order number let's say we have selected that's going to be our selected order number we can put that here that's going to be automated and then i also want to know what is the database row for the selected order so this is the order that's been selected the order that's being displayed here what is the database row it's going to be exactly the same as this formula except it's going to be based on a different order item so instead of r3 it's based here directly on b3 so we're going to select b3 so it's going to be the same so we know if, if we change this to two it's going to change to five i want to know the next order id equals if air we use a match max formula for that it's going to be based on the order ids all the order ids as long as they're numerical i need to know the next available one so we're going to ask at plus one add that in there if there's an error that means there's probably no data so we're going to set the default to one okay so i also want to know the selected item ids if we take a look inside the shop items we've got a, a bunch of ids associated with that i want to know the row that's associated with that so i want to put in that id vba is going to take care of putting the idea when i select the item vba is going to put in that number right here however a formula is going to tell us what row it's on so if we do equals again if error always if error we're going to use the match formula and what are we matching i'm matching this value but this time we're looking basically in the item id so item id and we also want an exact match on that and then we're also going to be adding three because they also start in row four if there's an error we're just going to show empty okay i want to know the selected item type bba will take care of that VBA will take care of the drink type, so it's going to add in those, so it's going to be maybe drink or whatever. And I want to know the selected size, so that's going to be either small, medium, or large. VBA will also take care of adding these things in. Selected item price. What is the price? Well, how do we know that? We'll use a formula for that, and we're going to type that in right now. First of all, it's going to be equals if error, in case there's any error. What I want to do is I want to know if we're if it's a drink type if it's a drink type we don't we got to use the columns based on small medium or large so if here b8 equals drink then we need to price it out based on i need to show the price based on whatever column it is so how do we do that we're going to use an index remember we're indexing we got the item price that's the one with those three columns item prices here so what column are we going to use first of all we need to determine what row we're going to use so we're going to use a match based on that but we already have it we've already got that match from it we already know it's right here inside b7 so we can add that in it's located right here so we've got that okay so next up but i want to subtract three off that because we know that we've already added three for that database row we're going to act subtract three for that because we we're going to using the index okay but now we know what column is it right there's three columns small medium and large how do we know what column it is to determine the column we're going to run run a match 
and we also have a value. What are we looking up? I'm looking up whatever's located in that drink size right here. And I'm looking it up. What is the match array? We're going to look it up in size range. Remember we saw that? Size range. I'll go over that was kind of quick. I'm going to go over this range size range for you one more time. But we're going to finish that out and we need an exact match. So that's going to give us the column. So once we have that, okay, we can just close a parentheses. So we know that that's going to set the column. Okay, great. So we well, let's go over that again. We're indexing the item prices. The row is going to be based on B7 minus 3. The column is going to be based on the selected size, small, medium, or large, based on the size range. This size range is simply three items in this range, small, medium, and large. Small will return one, medium will return two, and large will return three. Okay, but what if it's not a drink? What if it's false? If it's not a drink, I want to just return the first column. So we can do this. Index the item prices. The row number is simply going to be where it was in B7 minus 3. And then all we do is we have the uh, column 1. Remember, that means, for, I'll show you that one more time. And then if there's an error, we're just going to show empty. So what does that mean? So let's just take a look at one more thing, shop items. Let's take a look here, small, medium, large. See this? It's called size, size range, size range, these three fields. So if it's a small, it's going to return one. If it's a medium, it's going to return two. So that's going to tell us the column, column one, column two, column three, because we have that price. And if it's not a drink, we're only going to return column one. Take a quick look at that. If it's not a drink here, that means it's false. This is not a drink. It's only going to return column one. Okay, great. So that's going to return the price. So if I if we take a look at selected item one, we know it's in row four. We know it's a drink. It's hot and the small is 259. So let's take a look inside the shop items. We see item one, the small is 259, the medium is 311, and the large is 373. So if we take a look back on here, if I change this to medium, that price is going to change to 311. I change it to large, the price is going to change to 373. So now we know all we have to do is change this using VBA and we know the correct price. Okay, very good. I also want to know the selected item row. That's going to be here, whatever. The VBA will take care of that. Okay, we also want to know the add-in type, right? What kind of add-in type is it? And I want to know the row that's associated. So let's say we have an ID of three, the add-in. Remember, our add-ins have their own unique IDs. We know the three is on row six. So if we go back here, we need a formula for that. Very similar. Equals if error, always an if error. Matching, this time we're matching whatever's located right here. And we're looking at the add in IDs here. We want an exact match. Again, we're adding three. They always start on row four. And if there's an error, we'll show nothing. Okay, so we know that add in is on selected add in price. So we see that it's on row six. What is the price of that? Now, the price we see have a specific column. If we went over that, so equals, again, if error. We're going to use index, and this time we want the add-in price. We're indexing the add-in price. What is the row number? The row number is here. We're going to use minus 3 because I want the right price. Then the column is 1. And then if there's an error, we'll show empty. Okay, so that's going to get us a price. So we know that add-in ID number 3 is 50 cents. If we take a look at ID number 3, we see that it's 50 cents, and that's exactly what we want. If I change this to 65 cents, we want to make sure, whoops, not $65. 0.65. We want to make sure that that gets automatically reflected in here so we know that it's correct. Okay, very good. Now, the tax string is something that we're going to be using on the receipt, and I want to know what's the string of that. So let's take a quick look, a reminder inside the admin. We have something called tax option. This is the named range called tax option. It's either yes or it's no. And I also have the rate, the tax rate. So what I want to do is I want to combine those. If this is yes, if it's no, show nothing. If it's yes, then we are going to show the tax and the rate. So the formula will look something like this. Equals if the tax option equals no, then what are we going to show? Nothing. Then I don't want to show any. Then show nothing. Otherwise, what I'd like to show is tax, parentheses here, and I want to show, but I really want to show the tax rate, right? So the tax and, what is the tax rate? So we can put in, but I want to format that accordingly. So I'm going to use text for that to do that. And then I want to, what do I want to format? The tax rate, I'm going to put that in, and then I want to put in that actual tax rate. So we're going to do number here, then I'm going to do period, number, number, and then we're going to do the percentage. So that's the format that I want to set for that. And then I want to close parentheses. So then and the close parentheses. 
that's gonna be our format. Okay, so let's take a look at that. That's gonna say tax 8.5%, that's what I want. So it's this is what I want to appear on the receipt. I also wanna know the total paid, and that's gonna be simply formatted because we have it that formatted. So here, we're gonna put equals text, and I'll explain why it's not being formatted. Total paid here, but then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set a unique format, and we're gonna do quotation mark here. We're going to do the dollar sign here, and you can use any currency you want. I'll do the number, then we'll do comma, number, number, and then 0, 0.00. So that's going to be the format that we're using, and then close the parentheses. Okay, so that's going to be, so that means when this changes to, let's say, 34, 35, whatever, it's going to format this. This is what I want to use inside. Okay, the order, date, and time, this is going to be automated by VBA. Okay, so that's it for all the formulas that we really need. We'll do a few down here. I've got subtotal here. Obviously, if the subtotal, we need a formula here, so that's going to be equal. Equals sum is simply whatever's in this column right here. Our prices are always going to be in the same column, so we can use a large number. So it's going to be whatever's here. Okay, so now that means if we have prices here, and okay, we have that here. So the total, our tax is going to be what? Again, we need a formula for that. So equals if, we'll just put if the tax option equals no, then what do we want to put? Then either zero or empty is fine. So then we're just going to put uh, no. Empty, well, otherwise, what do we want to do? I simply want to multiply the tax rate. So the tax rate times what? The subtotal is going to give us our total tax, and that subtotal is located right here. Okay, so that's all we have to do to get that tax on that. So we see that the tax is 56 cents. And of course, the order total is simply equal to the sum of the subtotal plus the tax. And that's going to give us our total. Okay, very good. So the payment type, that can be whatever. Our change is simply going to be the total paid, uh, the total paid minus the order total. So if they paid $10 here, the change is simply going to be equals 10 minus the order total. Okay, very good. So I like that. We're going to save our work so far. Now what we want to do is we want to start creating some of the shapes that we have for our uh, items and our categories. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert. In fact, let me just, I got one formatted already on the other screen. I'm just going to copy that and because it's, it's already formatted. It's so easy, right? <laughs> Let's just bring it. Okay, so this is already formatted and it's called item sample. Basically, it's just a little bit faster. It's the same thing as here. If I were to enter this and, and format it all, that's all it is, and given a name. So it's just a rounded corner rectangle, except this one's formatted just the way I like it, and it's the sample item. Okay, so it is this one that we're going to create all of our shapes from. So it's going to help us out. Okay, the first thing we want to do is create those categories. I'm just going to duplicate this one, and I'm going to place it directly up here, just right about here. And I want to add in those categories. So I want to update the font for this size. It should be a little bigger. Let's put about 18 on this one. And I'm going to put the word coffee in here because that's our first one, so coffee. I want to give it a unique name. This name is going to be called category back coffee, category back and then underscore coffee. And this is very important because when I select it, I need to know which one. If I remove category back, I know what's left is coffee and I can place that in here. Okay, so we know that. So what I'm going to do now is then just simply duplicate that and add more of them. We'll give it a size. I think I'll hold down the control. I'm gonna do uh, one inch on the height and about 1.7 on the width. And we're also gonna add icons. We want those uh, icons to be added after we do the buttons. So I'm going to then bring this up to make sure that we fit everything in here. This one is gonna be called T. It's gonna be the same thing. I'm just going to hold down the control. I'm going to duplicate both of those, and then I'm going to do the same thing one more time. Okay, so holding down the control, making sure that everything gets lined up. We're going to line them up here, and then we're going to make sure that they are uh, centered, which looks good. Now that we have our main category shapes, we can then go ahead and name them. So we have coffee, tea. We're also going to have juice. I like a, a good fresh juice, so we're going to make sure our coffee shop has that. Aside from juice, we must also have smoothies, especially in the heat. It's very nice. And bakery. What I would do with bakery, I would have it every day if I could. Okay, bakery. And lastly, we want some roasted beans because nothing is more important than coffee in the morning. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for coffee this morning. Okay, so we have roasted beans. Now, why don't we put our icons for these six categories? So what we're going to do is we're going to insert pictures and this device and i've got them saved up here of course if you want all these icons all the pictures everything i've got that available on our patreon platform so we have all of that available to you tea coffee beans we have 
juices and smoothies here so we're gonna have those six and we're gonna insert those and then I'm gonna size them they're gonna have slightly different sizes but we can start out with a height of something like 0.55 so that'll be a good start and then we'll highlight obviously the bread one's not going to be that big but uh, that's a good start for our juice we're going to put that here for our coffee we're going to put that right here coffee beans the roasted beans are going to be here our tea will go here that looks pretty good and our smoothie here the bread's a little bit too big so we'll uh, i'm on a diet so we need to make the bread a little bit smaller okay so now we're going to center everything and then uh, we'll just center that here that looks pretty good make sure those shapes i think they are already centered here okay so now what i'd like to do is we can group them and name them or, or do it twice so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hold down the control i'm gonna group them and i'm gonna do the same for the rest okay now that they're all grouped what i'd like to do is i want to give them very distinct names and that's super important we see this background not necessarily the group is important but more the shapes within the groups because it is the shapes within the groups that are going to call the macros so that's the most important notice this says category back coffee so basically each one of those is going to have something called category back and then the name so i'm going to do that right now change this to t here and then i'm going to do the rest and get right back to you okay now that we've got everything named now we want to make sure that the names that we've assigned so it's basically category back and then something like roasted beans that name is very very consistent with our names of our shop items so these they must be consistent with these categories here notice that they're exactly the same so we want to make sure it's very consistent with that no spelling differences because this is what we're going to be used inside our particular criteria advanced filter okay so now that we have that set up we also need to change the icons okay so our category is going to go here so basically it's going to be like coffee so what we want to do through vba is to make sure that when we select something the category goes here but what if they select the icon too if they select the icon i need to make sure that the word coffee also goes here so whether they select the shape or the icon i want to make sure the word coffee goes here that's going to be our advanced filter so we have to give that a very distinct name as well so we're going to give it the name of I'm going to call it category icon in coffee so just as where this is category back in coffee we're going to call this category icon so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to call this category icon notice that category back and category icon both have the same number of characters very very important because when i eliminate these number of characters it's left with whatever category so very important the same thing here so category icon same number of characters category back so that's very important okay now i'm going to do the rest with the rest of the icons so it's going to be called category let's escape out of there i want to copy this it's going to be called category icon and we're going to name the rest whatever the rest is so i'm going to copy this here and now i'm going to do the rest okay so now that's all done so we each have our if we take a look in our groups we look at our selection pane here just to make sure we have group 40 that doesn't necessarily the group name doesn't necessarily matter but we want to make sure we have category icon uh category back t category icon smoothie oops this one's wrong here so we need to make sure that the back of this one says smoothie so i'm going to change that up there i want to make sure it's smoothie so that's a good way of double checking to make sure that everything's consistent roasted beans here we can bring this out a little bit to make sure uh coffee this one's also wrong so i need to update the, that to juice you can also change it within here which is kind of a nice feature it's it's a great way to show it okay great so coffee and then we'll change this to bakery okay so everything's consistent now and now that's really going to help us inside the macro because all we need to do is eliminate the first number of characters take whatever's remaining and place it directly inside here in b2 and that's going to be the first macro right because that macro is going to then generate duplicate this sample and then generate those food or drink items in columns e and f okay we'll get to that in a minute we've got a few more buttons to create on this right side so we've got our shapes here then we have we've got information here i want to show our item and our sizes so our sizes are going to go up here so i'm going to put here sizes this is where i want the sizes of those drinks to show up and i also want to put information so for add-ins right so where's our add-ins are going to go our add-ins are going to go right in here so we're going to put add-ins and that's for basically our add-ins are going to be different for coffee as they will be for juice or bakery or something like that so we can have different add-ins okay next up i want to put the item what is the item that we're selected that item name must go right about here 
So inside H10, we're going to go ahead and put that item. I want to put item and colon. And then I want whatever that item is, let's say green tea or whatever is going to go right here. So that's VBA is going to place it there. Next up, I want the size. What is the selected size? We're going to put that here. And lastly, I want to know what that price is. So the price will go directly inside K. So we're going to put the price. Okay, so perfect. So that that's going to happen. We'll take some borders. Add-ins are going to go right here. So we have all the add-ins. Now with the add-ins, we want individual shapes. No add, light, and extra. So we're going to create that. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to bring it over here and this is going to be for our no so we're going to add this shape i'll just put it in capital letters no but i want it centered and i want it much smaller and we'll make this uh about 0.35 and then we'll do 0.6 on that so okay so that's good and i'm going to center the text here and we're going to give it a very specific name it's going to be called add in type one so add in oops, let's do that add in type one now all we need to do is just duplicate that for each additional one so we have add in type one i'm going to duplicate that this is going to be for add so we'll control d this one will be used for add i'm going to place it right here and this is going to be for items that we want to add if we want to add additional ones and this is going to be called add in type two as you can imagine i've got two more to do the next one again i'm going to get out of here duplicate this one it's going to be for light they want light sugar light cream or something like that we can put in that light and likewise this will be adding type three and then the lastly i'll duplicate it and that's going to be used for extra so we're going to put this one as extra extra okay i like that that looks good no add light and extra going to be putting that in okay so let's make this a little bit smaller case because it's the text of this that we can do inside that so i'm going to actually make this lowercase and then lastly just make sure this is adding type four okay so i have four distinct names for our add-ins we can space them out accordingly here and uh we can add some borders so i'm just going to line them up holding down the control lining them up and then spacing them horizontally together okay so that looks good we can also group them together control f1 when we do group them and then we can go into the properties and we want to make sure that we move but don't size with the cells okay so now that we have that i want to put whatever our categories here i want to put up to six we're going to vba create that so we don't have to worry about that just yet we're going to add in additional buttons here and additional icons here so we've got our information here we don't need this additional we can use it actually so i'm going going to put in here an icon for dining in so we're going to put this on capital letters dining in and then I'm going to bring this over here give a, a distinct size and font all right we're going to make that bold just the way we like it there's enough room for an icon there we'll check the size on that I want to make sure that it's got a sufficient size so we'll go because they're all going to be the same size so we'll change that to a little bit bigger 1.65 is sufficient and then because we want it to cover the entire thing and then we'll go ahead and center that and as long as we have enough room for that icon what we can do is you want a little additional space you can set either the margins or you can also justify the text a little bit there to save room for that icon okay so that looks good so we got one for dining and i need another one for takeaway so i'm going to duplicate that using this d control d and then we're just simply going to write in take away so when we click it it's going to change the text here so we have that okay so now that we've got takeaway i also want to duplicate an, two more both of these we're going to create two additional buttons and then just going to go down here these are going to be used for print order and next order so i'll change the text here to print order and then next order and i'll adjust the margins on those next order okay so we're going to go down here holding down the control and with the right margin we'll put around 0 0.06 or something like that that's good i like that all right very good so we've got that now what we want to do is i want to create both the payment types and i want to create the number pad here with the space that we have left so we want to make sure that we've got enough space so this is going to go pretty much all the way down to the bottom here and then we're going to have our number pad and our payment types here so let's do those payment types i want to separate it into three so i know if this is about 1.6 each one's going to have to be about 0.5 so i'm going to duplicate that and then the width is going to change to about 0.5 because i need to put three within the same row for our payment types as i have three different payment types there's no text that's needed on this button so we can just uh, get rid of the text here Control a and delete here that's going to be an icon so what do we want to put there that what kind of icon i want to put that as cash so we're going to name that it's going to be called cash okay cash perfect and then i'm going to duplicate that and we're going to place it right here this one is going to be called credit card so credit card and lastly another duplicating it and this one is going to be gift card gift 
card. Now notice that those are the same payment types that we have set up inside the admin screen right here. Oops, we don't have those. Uh, we're just going to put those. We don't necessarily need to have them, but they'll be in a drop down list. So it's going to be the same. We could have a drop down list here, but generally I have this one click is going to do it. So we're going to give the icons a name. I guess we don't need to have that. Probably not that important for those. Okay, so we've lined those up nicely. Want to make sure that everything's got the same distance, equal distance. And now what I would like to do is have the number pad. So remember, we want to do our buttons first, then our icons second. So now I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to drop it right down here, except for the number pad, I want them equal, square. So we're going to make the height 0.5. Okay, inside that, this is going to be our one. So we're going to put the one here. And we can just call it, let's just say number one, giving a distinct name. Nice, important. And then I'm going to give it that one. So I'm just going to put a one in here. And that particular font, we're going to have to increase that. We're going to center both of them. I'm going to remove all the margins on here because it's going to be centered both vertically and horizontally so we don't need anything then that one here let's put that one in here okay so now we have it we want to make sure that it is centered and it's not yet so we're going to center that oh i think we also have it inside that with that particular text we have that text these particular alignments the indent so we can get rid of the indent increase the font selecting out of it selecting back into it making sure we have no spaces around that it looks good so now we're just going to increase it to a size that's manageable for us so we can see all the numbers very clearly okay that looks really good and now all we need to do is duplicate that and create all so i'm going to duplicate that for each number and i'll be right back Okay, so now all the buttons are there and now all we have, and we've also got the names. I've also changed the name number one, and I also have one for a decimal point and one for the clear. So our keypad's done. Now what we want to do is just line them up accordingly. And then what we'll do is we're going to group them all independently. We want to make sure that they are grouped. Once we have everything lined up, I'd like to group them. That's a, a very important so we can group them together. We're going to group and always when we group, we want to make sure that we also take into consideration that we're not moving the sizing. So with that entire group here, selecting on that group, going into the shape options and into the properties here and move it down size. All right, very good. We're just about done with this portion. We're just going to add the icons now. Okay, things are looking good. We can uh, bring this up a little bit here and then we're going to line everything up. Now that we've grouped it, we can just line everything up to make sure it's looking properly. We use our selection. Now I'm just going to line everything up to make sure it's perfectly centered above it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And now what we're doing, oops, let's get this one in too. I want to make sure we do them all. And now what we want to do is we want to add our icons buttons first, then the icons go on top. So we're going to add, we have to have icons for our dining in, takeaway, our location, our payment types, print order, next order. We need to add those icons in. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to insert pictures here, this device. And we want to make sure that we're going to add in the rest. So we need cash. We certainly need our credit card. We need our other payment type, which is a gift card. We also need our print here, where our takeaway, our dining in here. And I think that is good. So we're going to insert those. And then we're going to set the size on the, all everything we've inserted. So we're going to set it to about 0.5. I know you can't quite see them now, but they're down here. Here they are there. Okay, so now we've set everything up. So 0.5 is a little bit too big. So we'll go to 0.25 on that, about half the size. Okay, very good. Scrolling over here. Now we can place those accordingly. We have our cash here. We're going to size them. Our credit card here. And our lastly, our gift card here. These ones, uh, this one looks good here, the gift card. But I want to size these up a little bit more, making those widths a little bit higher. So 0.35 on those. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to line everything up, holding down selection, lining those up. And then what we'll do is we'll center them within them, other than the within the particular shapes that we have. And now we wanna make sure that those icons are also named exactly the same, very, very important. So to do that, if we're giving them the same name, it's kind of hard. If we try to rename it here, it's gonna revert back to, if I give it the same name, cash, it's gonna revert directly back to the shape that's named that. So we don't wanna do that. So what we want to do is we wanna go into the selection pane here and we'll select on the icon, we'll regroup these. And then we can rename it from here. So this, here we go. This we can call, we can change the name here, no problem. I'm gonna do the same thing for the credit card, this picture, and then we're gonna regroup them. Credit card, good. And then lastly, we have the gift card. So using our selection pane, it's much easier to rename. So we're gonna call this gift 
card. Okay, very good. So I like the way that that looks. Let's go ahead and ungroup. If you want to regroup something, you ungroup, holding down the control. And I'm going to select on those individual icons to regroup them. And then we're just going to, again, regroup them using our regroup. And then we can give it a name if we want to. But more importantly, we want to make sure that we're not moving and sizing here, we're changing that. Okay, very good. It looks very good. We've got our icons. Now let's add the rest of our, our dining in icons. Going to go here. We can make that a little bit bigger here. Our takeaway, we're going to show the bag here. And we have our print, and we also need a next order icon. So let me add that in. Our next order insert is going to be the last icon that we have to do. So just going to insert. This is the one that I forgot. Okay, so we're going to add that. It's a bit big, as you can see bringing that down lastly all we have to do so we've pretty much got all of our buttons set up here now all we just need to do is make sure that we have everything grouped accordingly then we can write some macros and we're going to go step by step in these macros i'll be writing them with you so you don't have to worry again aligning grouping them individually i'm going to do the same thing here aligning them vertically and then um, making sure that they're grouped accordingly okay so that's looking really good we have our order summary here we're going to add in some can add in some shapes. This group can take on a shape. So now we're going to add a little bit of a rectangular shape with no fill on that. So I'm going to change that here. I want that to encompass here so that it's grouped together. Kind of gives it a nice style here. So, and of course, we're going to use the same here. No fill on this. And actually, we'll change the outline to that brown consistent icon. No fill on that. And that's exactly what I want so that I can see that everything's brought into gives it a nice style and groups everything together we can bring this down i'm going to also group these together these all the buttons should be grouped together so that they move uh directly with each other always and then group them okay so i can bring these buttons down a little bit and everything's looking really good separating those all right i like the way that that looks it's very consistent with our theme and it's looking really good so we've got that set up we're going to save our work so far and now what we want to do is i want to bring this in i'm going to use this shape here i'm going to control d and i want to use one for our size so our size is also going to encompass that I'm going to bring that right about something like here we can adjust it in just a bit but basically it's going to be that now i want the same thing for the item information so we're going to go ahead and duplicate this and i'm going to one for the item information that selected item information is going to be right here so we're going to bring that up and then lastly i want another one for the add-ins so the add-in the group add-ins are going to be grouped independently as well and we're going to bring it down here okay so we're going to hold down the control we'll adjust the width on these to make sure that they all have the same width and then uh, shape format will set the width to to about three so we're going to go in the shape format here and just set the width to three okay very very good bringing it over i want that centered so now we have enough space for our add-ins we've got enough space for our sizes here and we also have space for our add-ins okay looking good i'm going to adjust as you can see that based on the size these uh rounded corners do adjust so we'd like them a little bit consistent with each other i want individual uh shapes for the sizes so i can do that here i'm just going to copy this i'm not going to duplicate it using control d i'm going to copy and paste if i duplicate it, it's going to remain in the same group and i really don't want that so i want something for our three sizes and i want three unique sizes we don't need any text on these buttons but i do want specific names and i want to put the sizes directly in here i'm going to drop this down down here can uh, 0.85 and then we'll do 0.9 on the width 0.9 okay and I also want to call this back size small so it's gonna be called back size and then underscore small I'm gonna duplicate that and all we need to do is just change the information and then one more duplication so we have all three for large and let's bring those in a little bit over here okay so that looks pretty good we can probably reduce the, the width a little bit to point eight seven okay very good so that's going to squeeze them all in we will update that and then i want to make sure that they're all inside here and then we want to space them uh horizontally accordingly okay that looks good so now i'm going to update the names this is not going to be small this is going to be called medium and we're going to have to color these accordingly whichever selected one i want it colored so that's going to be important and then lastly we want to put in large okay so we have all the shapes it is vba that will change these and it'll vba will also add in the picture so we don't have to worry about that we've got everything covered just the way we want it all right so now what we have here is we've got the primary screen pretty much set up a lot of, a lot of everything else is going to be controlled by vba we can make some minor adjustments but so basically we're going to start out when i select coffee i want in columns e and f 
all the items associated with coffee. And so basically what we have to do is the first step is when I select this, I want to put the word coffee and I want to put it directly into B2. And what's going to happen is we're going to run an advanced filter of all of our shop items. And I only want to return those with the coffee. So we're going to put coffee right here. Then we're going to have the results are going to come here. Only those coffee items will appear here. We're then going to loop through those. If there's a picture associated with it, a name, what I want to do is combine this picture name with whatever folder is in here. This is a named range called picture folder, picture folder. So if I combine those two, it's going to create that full file path to that picture. What is that picture? And they're located right here into my folder. So all of them are located right here. So what I want to do is extract that and I want to put it into a shape and I want to have it appear right here in two different columns. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do inside the VBA. So the first thing we want to do is write a macro that's going to select that category. And then I want to tie that same macro to all of these pictures. So let's go into VBA and give it a start. And if you're new to VBA, don't worry, just follow along. You're also welcome to watch this as many times as you want. If things move a little bit quick, you can feel free to slow down the video or do or watch it again as many times as you want. Okay, so inside the developer, if you don't have the developer tab available, we're gonna go into the uh, options here and we're gonna make sure we go into the customize ribbon and then select it from here. It is not necessary because you can also press Alt F11 to get you into the Visual Basic. And you can see I've got two workbooks open. One has lots of code. We're going to minimize that. That The workbook that we're going to be working on is right here called Orders and Screen Macros. So I've got the names of macros, but I don't have the macros written. And I just have some inside the module. I just have some variables. So it's going to make things go a little bit faster as it is already an extra long training. So the first macro we're going to write is called Category Select. This macro is going to be tied to those shapes. When I select those shapes, what I explained to you, that advanced filter is what's going to happen. So we're going to write that right now. We'll bring this down so we can get a good look at both the screen and the module at the same time. So inside this, we're going to focus primarily on, want to set that category name. The name of that category, if they select here, it's the name of the category is going to be coffee. If they select the icon, it's the same thing. So how do I extract the name coffee when they select here? Well, the shape name is called application caller. That's the name of the shape when you select something. So if I get rid of the first so many characters, then and I and I leave the word coffee, that's going to get it. So we can do that in one line of code. We're going to call this cat category name. That is a string variable that I've already defined right here. So category name. So category name is equal to. We're going to say use the replace because I have to remove some characters in order to extract that cop that category name application dot caller that is the name of the shape that called it whether it's the icon or the background shape now what we're going to be doing is i want just to extract the left portion of that right i only want the name of the category i want to get rid of everything else so what we're going to be doing is we're going to take the application the name application caller and we are going to remove the first 13 characters so whether it is the icon or the background the first 13 characters we're going to remove we're going to replace it, but I'm going to replace it with nothing. And when I replace it with nothing, that leaves the category name. So what am I going to do with that category name? I'm going to put that directly inside uh, B2. So we're going to do the coffee POS. That's the um, sh name of the sheet. That's, of course, the code name of the sheet. Coffee POS range B2. That's what's going to take on that category and dot value equals category name. So once I have it here, this category name is also linked to my criteria and my shop items. Here's our category. It's linked to coffee B2. So now all I need to do is run an advanced filter, have the criteria come here, and then the results are going to come here. So only those with coffee. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. And we're going to run an advanced filter. But before we do that, what I want to do is we're going to have a lot of shapes here, right? So if I select another shape, I want all of these shapes removed and then added again. So basically every time we select another category, all of those item shapes and icons and pictures get removed and then they get replaced. So what I need is some code that's going to remove everything first. So what we can do is for each item shape. Now item shape are, already has been dimensioned as a shape. So we're going to do for each shape. We're going to look in every single shape in coffee POS dot shapes. And we have that IntelliSense show up. We know we've got the right sheet code name. So for each one, we're going to close our loop next item shape. 
So we're going to do something inside. So if in string, I'm going to check to, on the name item shape dot name. We're going to look if the name contains category category back. And I also what I want to do is I also want to fill it. So we also want to not only remove it, but we want to fill it. So let's focus on the fill first. So that means basically when I select something, I want that color to go to that dark brown color. Let me just show you in the sample here what we're looking at. Here's the sample, right? So what we're trying to achieve is we want this color, the selected color to go to brown and the rest to go to back to that light brown. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing what we do is we take all the category backs and we change them to light brown. Then we determine the selected one and we make that that darker brown. So that's the goal of what we're trying to achieve, as you can see from the sample. Okay, so first thing we want to do is color all of them back to this light brown. Now, how do we know what that light brown color is? Well, we can use the RGB color. If you don't know what it is, just go into the home. If you look in the shape, actually shape fill here, shape fill, and then we go to more fill colors, we can see what it is. So we know the current fill color is 244, 235, 225, and it's got a hex of this. So we know the RGB colors. So that's what I want to do. I want to color them all to back that light brown, and then I want to give it a darker brown color. So what is that darker brown color that I want to give it? So we're going to go into the shape format. I have this color saved, shape fill. So basically I want to give it this color. So how do I know that color RGB? Again, same thing, shape fill more fill colors here look at the rgb so basically you can just write down these rgb colors and then just duplicate that within vba and that's exactly what we're going to do but the first step is always we don't know which one had the previously colored brown we don't know which category we selected previously so all we need to do is loop through all the category shapes and color them back to the basic color so that's exactly what we're going to do right here category back so only those um, if it's greater than zero. So that means only those shapes with the words category back. That's why naming your shapes is critical to developing these application. Then what are we going to do? If it's greater than zero, then that means only those shapes that contain the word category back. In fact, you can add an underscore onto that to make it more specific. Then what do you want to do is item shape dot fill dot for color dot RGB and what is that RGB? It is 244 is that light brown color, 235, and then lastly, 225. That is that light brown color that we want to give it. So that's the, the fill color that we want to do. So RGB equals, I need to do equals, and then RGB, okay? So that's gonna set, set light brown color for all categories. Okay, so for every single one. Now what we want to do is we want to color the selected one. Well, how do we know what the selected color is? So it's relatively simple. So we're going to do coffee, POS, dot shapes. And we know it starts with category back, right? Category back. We know that. And what is it also? It also with the category name and category name. There it is. Dot fill, dot for color, dot RGB equals rgb and now it's that dark brown color that we're going to give it that selected color 218 188 154. okay so that's the color that we're that's that dark brown color that we're going to use so this is going to be called the selected brown color so that's it so that's all we're going to do okay great so why don't we just test this out we're going to save it just to test this out to make sure that we have everything that we so when i make it so now all we need to do is hold down the control or we can use our selection it is that same macro that we're going to assign to everything so i'm going to right click and then we're going to use this workbook only i want to focus on this workbook and this is called category select so i'm going to click okay so now all we want this to do is change put the category name in b2 and then change the color so as we can see, they're not all colored. So let's go ahead and update that. Oh, since we grouped them, we need to make sure we ungroup them, right? Well, now we've grouped them. If we're gonna group, we need to call out, if, if we're gonna use the group item, we need to call out the group, then the item within the group. But if we ungroup it, then we can call them both out, that's fine. We don't necessarily need them group. I just wanna make sure that they're spread accordingly, vertically, and then we can ungroup them. Okay, so now it's gonna work fine. As we ungroup them, right? Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Okay. So now whether we select on the icon itself or whether we select on the shape itself, it's going to have the same result. Perfect. Okay. So we see that the name is changing here and we see that those results are going to change right here. So now we have the category. So now we can write the rest of the macro. It's going to run that advanced filter in the shop items. So we can go down here. I'm going to focus on those shop items now. So 
we're going to then run a macro to load the item. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing what I want to do is I want to take this loading those items. I'm going to put it directly in here. So run macro to to load items. Once we have that, we're going to focus on loading those items and it's going to go right here. The first thing I want to do is I want to clear all of the existing. This is what I was talking about before. Clear all the existing clear clear all existing items within the screen for each item shape. You're going to use that item shape in coffee POS dot shapes. Again, close our loop next item shape. Once we have that, what I want to do is I want to look for very specific shapes. So what shapes are those? I want to look for two shapes, one called shop item and one called item picture. Inside here, inside, we're going to clear everything out of these two columns. Anything that has the name shop item and anything that has the name item picture. So both of those we're going to check for. So here inside the module, we're going to say if in string, again, checking for in string, item shape dot name, and it contains shop item so that means the name contains the text shop item is greater than zero then we're going to delete it then item shape dot delete i'm going to copy this and i'm going to do exactly the same thing for the background so the shop item backgrounds going to be named that and the item pick pict and they, again they have the same number of characters very important here i we're going to delete that so i'm deleting now when we when we have two of these in the same loop we want to make sure to wrap it in on air resume next and on error go to zero because if it deletes one it won't have won't find it for the other so that means if it's deleted here it's going to show an error right here so if we do on air go to zero and on error resume next that'll cover that i won't create any issues with that okay so that's going to remove all the existing shapes on the coffee pos now what we want to do is run our loop to make sure that we also uh, in the shop items and run that advanced filter before we do that i want to clear out a few other things b10 if we take a look at b10 i want to the selected size i want to clear that out whatever that and i also want to clear out b12 whatever the selected item row is i want to clear that out so b10 and b12 should also be cleared out so we're going to do that we're going to add in the sheet name coffee pos dot range b10 b12 dot clear contents clear we'll just put a note clear out selected row item row and uh, the size okay so now that we have that we can focus on the shop items now we're going to run that advanced filter shop items it's called and i always add that you see i add it real quick i just want to make sure intellisense pops up if i have the the sheet name wrong and i put a period it, nothing will show up but if i have it right it's going to show up that means i confirms that i've got the right code name for the sheet name okay we're going to do the last row the last row is equal to a and xl up i use auto hotkey to automate that so last row if the last row is less than four we can exit the sub out we're going to run our advanced filter our advanced filter is going to be based on our criteria that we we saw and that criteria is going to be located so let's update that then we're going to have we'll update in just a second we're going to have the last results row i need the last results row and if the last results row is less than three, we can exit the sub out because there are no items. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back inside our shop items. We're going to update that. That range is going to go all the way from A through I. That's our original data range. So we're going to change this to A3 through I. Our header rows are on I. Our criteria is going to be L2 through L3. So L2 through L3. And then we're going to copy that all the way for here. Here's the copy to range. It's going to be based on O through Q, O through Q. So we're going to change this to O through Q. Our last results row is going to be based on column O. So we're going to change that to O. That's, we want to show the item ID, the item name, and the picture. So that's what I want in the results. Assuming that there are results, we can then continue on. So what do we want to do? I want to determine, uh, I'm going to turn off application screen updating to make things a little bit faster. Application dot screen updating equals false. And I want to make sure that before this macro ends, I turn it back on. So right in here, application dot screen updating equals true. Now everything can be written in here. Okay, so once we did, we're going to loop through the results of that. So we're going to determine the picture folder, picture folder, that's a string uh, variable here, equals we already have a named range called full picture folder. Now notice that our named range picture folder is different than pick folder. It is, I just want to make sure that the named range is different. Here's our named range. 
Here's our variable name. Make sure these are different. I create when these are exactly the same spelling, it creates a lot of issues. So this is our picture folder. Where are the folder where our pictures are stored are stored in? I also want to set the original top position. Top position is a double variable. Here it is. Our left position, our top position are double variables. I also want to set the item height and the item width. Now we're going to set that initial. Where do we want that first one to show up? Right about here in E3. That's our initial top position. So we're going to set that initial top position. It's going to be based on the E3. So it's equal to, make sure we call out the sheet because we're in shop items. So we need to call out here our coffee, POS, dot range, E3, dot top. What is the top position? Initial top position. I also need an initial left position. So the initial left position is going to be basically based on the left position of this. So I'm going to copy this, paste it down here. It's going to be the left position. So this is the initial left position. Okay, I got to spell initial properly. I rarely do. Okay, so now that we have those set, those are going to change as we build it up. Now what I want to do is I want to set that initial item, that item width. The item width is going to be based on the column E. So we can do something like equals coffee POS dot range E through, let's do E through E. I want to know the column width, just that single column. So I'm going to base it on that dot width and then not the entire column, maybe minus five. I don't want it that big. So set shape width. And now what I want to do is I want to set the height. So the item height is equal to, we're going to basically make it the item height. Uh, let's say let's, I have a number here, 94. That was kind of worked out. Okay. So 94 set item height. Okay, great. So now that we have those, we're going to be able to follow those for each shape that we create. And now what we want to do is run our loop. So I'm going to run a loop here inside our results from three to the last results row for each one. We are going to create a shape. We're going to give it this name and we're going to use this picture. And we're going to, importantly, we're going to import the ID. So that's very important. All right. So that's exactly what we're going to do inside the code. So we're going to run that loop for the result row equals three to last result row. And then closing our loop, next result row. Once inside our loop, what we want to do is we want to set the item ID. The item ID is going to be equal to, whoops, equal to. And again, if you're not sure you got the variables right, there's a few things you can do, right? You can uh, uh, remove it. So you see how the capital, if I, if I put them some in capital letters, but I put them in small letters here, and then I go out of the line, you see how they automatically change to capitals. Then I know I got the named range probably right. Okay. So it's going to be equal to dot range. It's located in column O and the result row O and the result row dot value. So that is our item ID. Now, once we have that, I want to just uh, copy that and we're going to use it to create our other variables. We also want to make sure that we have an item name. So the item name is equal to, let's do equals to, that's going to be located in column P. And then lastly, we have our picture. So that's the item name and our item picture. So we have our pick name, also a string variable. It's equal to what's located in column Q. That's the name of the picture. So we combine that with a folder, we get the full file path. So that's the item picture. Okay, so once we have that, we're all ready to go. We have all of our three variables that we assigned. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring inside the coffee, we're gonna take this shape called sample item and we're going to duplicate it. That's gonna be the background. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So coffee, POS dot shapes, this shape, pasting it in dot duplicate. And I want to give it a very distinct name. What is that name going to be? Well, the name is, has to be unique per item. So it's going to be equal to shop item. Remember, that's the same name that we removed right here. Shop item, shop item. And what is, how are we going to make it unique? We're going to add that item ID. So, and the item ID. So that is going to be the new shape name. Then we can work with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that right here. We're going to focus on that. So with coffee POS dot shapes, that brand new shape that we just created, we're going to focus on some things. Oops, let's close the parentheses on that. And then what we're going to do is oops, double quotes here. No need for that and no need for that. Okay. So now moving in, what do we want to do? First of all, I want to set up the top position. That top position is going to be based on the top. So dot top equals top position. And of course, the left position is going to be the left position. But what is the left position? The left position is either here or here. If it's um, if the row number is three. So basically, let's put this. I'm going to take a look at this. The first one, which is row three, is going to go on the left. The second one, which is row four, is going to go on the right. 
So odd or even. So basically the odd ones, the odd rows are going to go on the left. The even rows are going to go on the right. So I can use that to position it in both columns. So let's take a look at how we might do that. We're going to use an if then statement. If the result row, three, four, five, whatever it is, mod two equals zero, meaning even, that's even, then let's put even rows second column, which is column F, right? Second, okay? And if, and then put an else in here. Okay, so this would be odd rows, first column. We'll put, just to make it very, very clear, column. This is gonna be column E, and this is gonna be column F, so very clear. Okay, all right, so what do we want to do inside column F? So I wanna set the left position. So the left position is equal to coffee, P-O-S, dot range, F colon F dot left. And then we'll, I don't want it exactly on the console, we'll add about five pixels onto that. Okay, great. And now what we want to do, if it's, if we know it's the second column, what I want to do is I want to increment one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to keep moving that top position down, 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 right? So after the second. So the top position, we're going to increment that. So the top position is equal to top position we've already set the initial we've already set the initial top position so this is the second time this is after we've already set it right so this is for the next one so the top position plus the item height plus five so basically we're, it's the height of the shape plus five equals the top position plus the item height plus five that's going to reset top position okay very good so what if it's inside the first column if it's in the first column all we need to do is set the left position is equal to, we could pretty much set it on the left position, right? We already have it. So left equals left position. Okay, we've already set the left position directly up here, so we could sit based on column E, so that's fine. Okay, so set left position. Okay, so now that we have that, we also wanna add in the width. So the width is going to be equal to the item width. We've already defined that. We already set the height, dot height is equal to the item height okay sometimes i like to use lowercase just to make sure i get the spelling right and we also want to do what's the text that's going to go inside that so let's move this up a little bit scroll up here what is the text it's going to be text frame two dot text range dot text is going to be equal to the item name equal to the item name so that's going to be the text shape text okay very very good and also one more thing i want to add a a, a macro to that so it's going to be on action it's going to be equal to and it's going to be called item underscore select. I've got a macro, see, right under here called item select. That's the macro that we're going to build. And when we select on it, we want something to happen. Macro to run when selected. Okay, so that's it for the back. So now what we want to do is we want to add in the picture. So we're good. We're good with this on this. Let's bring this in a little bit. Okay, I like that. So now we've built up the background shape, but what about the picture? We're going to focus on the picture now. We want to make sure that. So we're going to set the picture path first. What is that picture, that full picture path? Picture path is equal to picture folder and backslash and what else? Of course, it's going to be that item picture. So that picture name, full picture file path. I do want to make sure it is correct that there's no issues. So if there is issues, we want to, we want to check if the directory of the picture path VB directory is equal to empty or perhaps one of the other items or, or the item picture is empty or something or the picture name equals empty then what we want to do is go to no pick and we want to skip all that down here go to no pick so it's going to skip adding a picture if it doesn't exist if it does exist and it is correct we are going to then insert it so we're going to do coffee pos dot pictures dot insert and what is it we inserting that picture path once we insert that, we want to give it a unique name. Name is going to be equal to the item picture, the, the very specific name, and the item ID. Okay, great. So once we've added it there, I'm going to work with that. So we're going to focus. We've already inserted it. So again, with coffee, P-O-S, dot shapes, we're going to work with it. Okay, so what are we going to work with here? Oops, I did it again. Okay, so uh, inside that, I want to size and position the picture as well. So we're going to add in the end width here, and we can work with that specific picture that we just added. The first thing that I want to do is I want to lock that aspect ratio equals to MSO true so that it, the aspect ratio does not change. If the width is greater than the height, 
then I want to set the width then the set the width equal to let's say about 50 else let's say the height is going to also equal 50 equals 50 so it's going to set the limit to the size of that picture okay I want to put the top position of that picture is going to be based on the existing item so it's going to be based on this item we've already placed this item right here so it's going to be based on that item so the top is going to equal to the top of that shape plus five top plus five so it's going to be a little bit lower than the top of the shape the left of the picture the left is going to be equal to the left position the left position of the shape plus i want to add what is the item with the item width minus the width so i want to center minus the width of the picture so and then divided by two what that's going to do is going to center that picture inside the shape center picture horizontally okay perfect i like that and then also i want to do the same thing basically i want to assign the same exact macro to the picture as well so we can sign that okay so that's going to sign the item select on the action okay we're going to save our work so far and we're going to take a look to see if we have any errors okay so basically when we click this we want something to happen okay well that looks really good you see what we did here we clicked it let's try t it's a little bit slower than i'd like but you see those pictures don't erase okay we what we're doing is we're not deleting the pictures i didn't pick 18. so when we see duplications like this that means the original picture is not do is not being deleted so if you run into that that because we have in other words if if your pictures aren't being deleted properly they get created once and then there's the size is not right it's because you have duplicate images so that means for some reason right when we do the coffee it means we have a duplicate images so we probably have more than one picture like that so usually it's something like item picture is not going to be deleted so let's take a look inside that to see why our pictures are not going to be our pictures are not deleted. we have shop picture here that's being deleted but i think we have something called item picture shop item so what we need to do is we need to probably update the name so this is called item picture probably should be so we have to either change this to shop picture or change the above okay so we're naming them correctly so let's just name them to re removing them to item picture so in other words we're create we're deleting something that called item picture and we're creating it making sure that we have right up here item picture so now it's going to work fine so now we select t all the pictures get created all the pictures get deleted so anytime you see that we're, we're too many pictures it means they're not being deleted or named properly so you just want to check two things one check to see what you're deleting here are you deleting the correct number and to see what you're creating we're creating the item picture right here so we want to make sure that that that's the same and you're good to go okay so everything looks really good we've got a macro that's tied to this and we can check it out okay very good so now what do we want to do now we've got all everything created looking good now when i select an item i want some things to happen one i want if it's a drink i want the sizes and i also want to make sure that we have the information for the add-ins if we're adding those okay so the next macro we're going to write is the macro that's tied to this called item select that is the macro that we added up here called item select that's also the next macro we're going to do so what do we want to do we need a few things we want that item information i want the item name to appear here i want a default size to be set now that default size is located right here it's called the default size and we set that to whatever we want and so we want that information to appear here we want the default size to be selected and whatever add-ins are associated with that drink type so we've got add-ins we've got if it's a drink we want these type of add-ins to come in if it's food we want these types or bean we want these so that's going to be the add-ins that are going to appear here in shapes all right so let's get that started called item select now we're going to focus uh primarily on the coffee pos primarily so we're going to focus on that so with coffee pos sheet again adding that period for intelligence to make sure we have the right sheet name we want we're going to dimension the uh let's put in the size column as long and we want to know whether because we also want a price that's associated with the size so i'm going to show you what that means and the size row as long okay we'll get into that exactly what's going to be so basically when we have a size here in the shop items i want to know what column it this column this column this column and also what rows associated with that item so we're going to need that as well as we place it okay so we're going to turn off application screen updating we're going to go back to this sheet that's what we're going to be focused on and we'll be make sure to turn it on so anytime we turn it off we turn it back on application screen updating equals false and then i'm going to do the same thing before we end the macro application 
dot screen updating equals true. Okay, so inside our code is going to go in between there. And what kind of code are we going to be right? The first thing what I want to do is with that item select, I want to clear out again, I want to make sure that those two fields are cleared out the selected size and also the order, right, we're going to be adding those brand new, but I want to make sure that the order, the order rows, whatever rows associated here with the next item. So B10 and B12 must also be cleared out. We've already done that here. So we just need to copy and paste that up here we've already done it up here those two fields let's see right up here I'm going to copy this clear out item row so we just need to copy that and then bring that down here since we've already added it okay we've already has the sheet so we don't need to do the sheet okay we're clearing out those select items just to make sure that they're clear before we add it next up what i want to do is i want to set the picture folder i want to set that just as we did before now we've already defined the picture folder up here so we're going to do it once again here simply copying this and bringing it down here adding that picture folder once again defining that range okay after that we want the item id what is the item id now if we remember correctly here we've added the shop item one and coffee one so this is the id here so if we take a look we have item pick if i want the item id i'm going to remove the first eight characters if they select on here if they select on the background again i'm removing the first eight characters so whatever's less no matter no matter what they select here I want to extract that item ID. So shop item four, you see four is for the green tea. If we look inside our shop items and we look at four, it's the green tea. So item ID four, green tea. So I really need that item that item ID because I need to know the, the default drink price. What is it? If it's a drink, I need to extract. I also need the picture and I need to know the information from it. So I want to put that ID. So that ID, that selected item ID, I need to place that. And where are we going to place that? We're going to place it directly here inside B6. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so we have that. So we're going to extract that called item ID. How are we going to get that? It's going to be equal to replace application caller which is the again the name of the shape that called i know i use that a lot but it's really really uh, critical it's a great feature application caller left this time we're removing application dot caller and i want to remove the first eight characters and, and replace them eight here and replace them with nothing so that's going to get our item id i also want to know what is the item name item name name is equal to what basically it's the text inside remember the item it's the text inside here so it's the text inside the shop item so what i want to do is i want to call out the shop item so to get that shop item we are going to use dot shapes we know it's the shop item and the item id which we already extracted and we want to go and look in the text frame text range text so what is the text of that shape that is our item name that's how we extract the item name item name so now we have both the item name and the item id i'm going to set b2 sorry b2 is going to take on that b12 excuse me b6 is going to take on that item id range b6 is going to take on the item id six dot value equals item id Okay, and then I want to put the item name. Where do I want to put that item name? I want to put that item name directly inside here, inside I10. So we'll do that here. Dot range I10 dot value equals item name. Okay, so we're setting the item name and we're setting the item ID. Set item ID. That's the selected item. Now, what else do we want to do? So I want to now basically go in and look inside the shop items now i want to color these selected if we remember we just like we color these i'm going to color these i want to know the select items so what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this right up here i'm going to copy everything we did right here and then i'm going to update it for each shape we just need to update the shape names but it's kind of basic process so basically all of these items we're going to make them light brown and then the selected one we're going to make it dark brown so just as we did with the categories we're now going to do it with the items so we can copy it and then modify it to save a little bit of time so i'm going to paste that in here and so for each let me just tab this out a little bit here for each item shape and copy so we're but now what are we focused on we're focused on the shop item so we're going to change it to shop item everything that equals shop item i'm going to set the four color for all this time item for all i let's do item shapes okay not categories and now we want to take what i want to take the shop item and i want to color so how are we going to do that so this one's going to be the shop item 
shop item and the item id that one that specific one we're going to color that dark brown item id okay so i like that but also what i want to do is i want to update the shape so if we take a look here i've got different for cold and hot drinks i've got different sizes i've got different cups let's take a look inside my picture and take a look inside here so we've got some cups here this large paper these paper these brown paper these are for hot and the plastic is for cold so i got three each of those so we can see them up here small and i've got the names right here the names of those pictures are not matter so for hot drinks we're going to use the small paper large paper so these are for the hot drinks these are the pictures for the cold drinks so but i want to do is i want to clear any pictures that might exist any pictures that that might exist i want to clear them out so what we're going to do is we're going to give those very specific names called picture sizes and since we're adding more than one we're going to wrap it in on air resume next and on air go to zero so we're going to do that right here okay so now inside there i also want to remove as we loop through all the shapes i'm going to look for another dig if in string this time i'm looking for item shape dot name i'm looking for the size pictures i'm going to give them a very specific name called picture size if it's found i'm going to delete them because we're going to replace them if it's a drink only if it's a drink is greater than zero then item shape dot delete so i'll put a little note here delete any size pictures if visible okay okay so we're deleting those so we're using the same looping through the same shapes we're here basically we're coloring and we're doing two things we're coloring all the backs this light brown and we're just removing any pictures that are inside that would be inside here we're going to then remove them okay so now the third thing that we've done is we've actually colored the select item brown so how about when we select it when we select it let's fix this item name item name not let's run that and update that okay so now we see that it's looking good so we've got our code here our our name is here so far we've got it we've got that one selected to brown and these are looking good whether we select on the icon or whether we select on the shape perfect that's just the way we want it so far so good okay let's continue on with our code so after we color that selected shape brown what else do we want to do well i want to set the item id so b6 we've already set the item id up here good that's covered next up i want to make sure that we are going to set if it's hot the size i want to know if it's a drink how do we know if it's a drink well i can look here remember we have a, we have the item type here but how do we know that if that's a drink well, we need a formula that's going to help us with that and so because we've placed the item id here now we know the row of this so what i want to do is i want to run an index and i want to look inside this row eight and i want to see if it is if it is a drink type so basically we're going to look it up here i'm going to look up the item type and i'm going to see if it's a drink if it is a drink i want to know is it hot or cold so we can do that as well but first we'll do drink then we do hot so we can do both of those things they're going to be formulas equals if error always if error we're going to run an index on the item type so item drink type or item type so this is going to be the item type so we're going to look at the item type and what's the row number the row number is going to be basically the selected database row minus three and then we want the single column if it's an error we're going to put empty okay so that's going to tell us it's a drink but then what i want to know is is it a hot drink or is it a cold drink so we can have a formula that's going to help us with that first i want to know again we can do if error we're going to run an index but this time we're indexing what the item drink type so this is going to be the drink type and again the row is simply going to be the what's in b7 and we're going to subtract three then we want an exact uh, column number so we're going to put the column number if it's an error okay so that's going to tell us it's hot so now we know it's a drink and we also know it's hot so what i want to do is i want to just look up these three pictures of the hot cups and i want to place them directly in this shape this shape and this shape so that's what we want to do first what we need to do is check to see if it's a drink inside a code so we can do that our drink is going to appear it's going to appear if it's a drink it's going to appear in b8 so that type that item type is going to appear directly inside b8 if dot range b8 dot value equals drink then can we close our loop okay so we know it's a drink type drink type now what we need to do is determine what type of a drink is it hot or is it cold so first of all i want to i know it's a drink so what we're going to do inside this 
um, I10 or inside the selected size B10, we can put that. So in fact, let's go use a formula here. I'm gonna use a formula and I'm just gonna put equals if, because I want that size to appear, that default size to appear right here, the selected size inside B10, if this equals empty then show empty otherwise i want to show whatever is there and that's going to be that selected size so b10 is going to change as the user selects a different size so it's going to show empty right now but so what i want to do in the selected size is i want to place that default so whatever's inside our default size here e9 that means when they select drink it's going to go to that default size it's going to be put in b10 so all we need to do is dot range b10 dot we have a named range for that already to value equals and then we're just going to put default size default size okay so that default size is going to go set default drink size now that we know that what we want to do then is i want to determine is it a hot or cold so if dot range b9 is that dot value equals hot if it's hot we're gonna we're gonna add some drinks so i want to set the size column then size column and i'm gonna explain this in just a second equals eight equals eight else size column equals nine set size okay so what does that mean the size column as we know inside the admin screen we have two columns one column here and one column here if i'm going to be pulling up the pictures i need to know what column to pull it up from we know that this is column eight and this is column nine we know the rows already it's going to be seven through nine but i want to do is i want to know what column if it's a cold drink it's going to be in column nine if it's a hot drink it's going to be in column eight so that column number is going to help us that's why we have that inside a variable okay so continuing on with our code if it's a hot the size column is eight l size column equals nine now that i have the size column what i can do is i can run a loop so for size row equals seven to nine then our admin that's where they're located next size row okay great so now that we have that what we want to do is i want to insert those pictures so basically what is the size i'm going to set the size size is equal to the admin dot range g is where the size are located and the size row dot value set size name so we're setting the name of that size it's going to come directly from column g if we take a look in there we see column g is going to have small medium and large so we're setting our size variables right there once we have that i also want to grab the picture so if we take a look at the size i want to first of all I want to make sure that the back size is visible so let's take a look here we have back size small back size medium and back size large i want to make sure that those are visible so we're going to do that right here because we may not want to show those for things that are not drinks we may not want to show those sizes so we can do that here dot shapes back size underscore make sure that we have the underscore just as we do there and the size and size dot visible equals mso true show back background uh drink size shapes okay so we're showing those to making sure that they are deleted i also want to set the picture name what is that picture name it's going to be located equals the admin this time we're using cells cells size row size column dot value picture name and just to reiterate what we're doing here is we're grabbing that picture name i'm either grabbing the picture name from here or here or from here or here so we're just looping through seven through nine or grabbing the picture name whether it's a cold or a hot drink so we're extracting that information there okay so now we have that inside a variable once we have that picture name i want to set the full picture out the picture path is equal to the picture name and the backslash here and also i want to know that picture excuse me picture name i'm going to add that picture folder actually picture folder and the picture name combined so that's going to be our picture path folder okay so we have the full size full picture path okay so now once we have that we can insert that but i would do want to check it to make sure that it is correct so if the directory actually we we copied it up here so we can just do it something like here I'm basically i'm going to copy this right here same thing here no difference so go to no pick so we're just going to go down here and write in no pick okay so now that we know the picture is correct we can then insert it so we can do this dot pictures dot insert and the picture path we're going to give it a very specific name equal to picture size and then i want to give it an underscore and whatever size it is and the pick and the size was called size and the size okay that's going to uh, create and name the picture once we have it then what we want to do is we want to set the location first thing i want to do is go with that brand new what we've just created which is this right here this is the shape that we just created dot shapes picture size 
And what are we going to do inside it? First, lock the aspect ratio equals true, just as we do with all the pictures. Next up inside that, I want to know if the dot width is greater than the dot height, then we're going to set the width to 50. Then dot width equals 50, else dot height equals 50. Okay, so we're just setting the minimum, the maximum height and width. Okay, once we have that, we need to position it at the left. There we go. Equals, what is it going to be based on? Coffee. POS dot shapes, I mean, it's going to be inside that back size, back size underscore. And what is the size? So size and size dot left. So basically, right, I want to place it inside this shape. We know this is back size small and the small. So we're placing it inside this shape, but I want to say, oops, I'm a little quick there. I haven't finished the code. So good. It's working properly so far, but we need to set that. What I want to do now is set the left position, right? All we did was we set it exactly to the same to the left, but not quite, right? We want to center it. So how are we going to do that? We got to continue with the code. I pushed the button by accident, but that's okay. Looks good so far. Okay. So the left position, we're going to add to that. Plus, I want to know the width of this shape. So plus, it's going to be the width of this this shape dot width minus what are we subtracting we're subtracting the width of the actual picture and we're going to divide that by two so we're going to put that in parentheses here put this in parentheses divided by two okay now let's accidentally click a button see how we're doing okay so now we click that okay so now it looks good it's centered now we got to set the top position so that's the next thing we haven't gotten to that yet top position what's that top position is going to be that top position we're going to set equal to Again, this coffee, but the size of that top position based on that shape, plus we're going to add a little bit onto that. So we're going to plus three. I also want to assign a macro to that. So on action, it's going to be equal to a macro called drink size underscore select. Okay, good. So that's the macro that's going to be tied to that. Now let's see. Now we got our top position set. Okay, that looks really good. So we see now that's good for a hot drink. How about a cold drink here? All right, everything's looking really good. So we've got our macros. I like the way that that looks. Size, let's make sure this is bold. This looks a little bit off-centered. I think it's okay. All right, so continuing on, we have the information. I think we just need to move this over a little bit, this over a little bit. Okay, continuing on, now that we've got our drink sizes set up, what we want to do is we want to fill the back size. Okay, so let's do that. So remember, we have a default. Remember, we have that default here. So here in our admin, if I switch that default to switching it to a large default and I select one, right? I want, so here's our large size. But what I want to do is I want to show that default size as the darker brown because it's already selected. So I want to show it. You see it's put here in B10 and it's linked to here. So now what I want to do is I want to know which one has automatically been selected by coloring the last one that color. So that's exactly what we're going to do now, now that we've been there. So we're going to set the default size. So let's put a little note here called set default size. And to do that, we've already set the default. We've already actually set the default size up here, but we want to color that. So how do we do that? Well, we can do it pretty much exactly the way we did it up here with the shapes again. So we're going to loop through just as we did. And we just need to copy and paste those. So let's go back up here and take a look right at, uh, let's copy this one up here that we did. I like this setting the brown color. So we're just going to do this for each. Now we're focused on the shape. So you see, it's kind of a repeat, but it's just so setting the default size. Okay, so I'm gonna tab this here and here. Okay, but now we just need to change the names to be. So we're gonna go again, loop through every shape. We're just focused on three shapes in this case, but the ones that we're going to color, we're gonna focus on anything that says back size. So back size, which is just three, we're gonna give them that regular brown color. Then what I want to do is I wanna focus on back size, back size, and the size, giving it that dark brown. So whatever size that background color, select in the brown color for default size. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna change the name up there for all sizes, all size shapes, for all size shapes. Okay, so let's take a look at the macro so far to see how we're doing. Okay, good. So you see now it's selected large, here, so large is always the default size. However, if I change the default size here to back to medium, and then we select another drink, that medium is going to be set. Whoops, it didn't work. Let's fix that up. Inside the code, I'm going to set that default size because that variable needs to be reset. Size equals default size, just to make sure default size. Okay, very good. So that's going to set that default size to make sure that we have that. All right, so let's take a quick look in here. Now it's going to be set to medium, which is what I want. Let's do uh, change it to small just to make sure that we have 
all add that default size on new drinks resetting perfect just the way i like it okay continuing on what else do we want to know inside this macro well i'd like to know the price of that default size that's very important if we take a look here we have the item price so why don't we link that to that so we're going to equals whatever price is located here so now we've got the price set if the user selects a different size i want to make sure that b10 takes on that default size of range b10 dot value equals size so we want to make sure set default in cell okay so now we have the default size in a cell things are looking pretty good on that all right so we've got the the sizes set up and we're looping through the size what if there's no sizes what if there's no so we see this is the next size but i'm going to do else no size needed and what i want to do then is hide the shapes now there's two ways you could do this you could hide there's only three of them so we may not need to run a loop we could just basically create a, hide these or run a loop either one it's a, so one's three lines of code one's four lines of code so whether you run a loop or whether you uh, hide the shapes it's either one is fine so so we could we'll run the loop but there's two ways to do this in other words you could just copy and paste you could do this you could do dot shapes uh back sides size uh, and then small dot visible equals and so on and so forth oops dot visible we'll do the loop it's a little more fun dot visible equals mso false so that's one way of doing it right for and then just copy this and paste it for each one but another way to do that is you can run that loop here just as we did for size row equals seven to nine so that would be three lines of code this is four lines of code next size row all we need to do is then grab the size directly from here just as we did before the size just like we did here and then what we're going to do is we're going to hide it so both are fine either one is okay so now we can do dot shapes and then we do back size underscore and size dot visible equals mso false false not true false okay so the idea here is if it's non-drink let's say we go to a bakery item i don't want those when i select something i want those shapes to be hidden so they're all hidden on bakery items okay now theoretically we could uh show uh hide them when we select the bakery but uh so we'll, once we select it it sets the default size okay so if it's a drink type we want to show otherwise they're going to be hidden so i like that so this is for hide shapes uh non-drinks i just put non-drinks okay very good so now we've got that we've set it all up and now what i want to do is i want to run add-ins that are associated so uh, drinks have some type of add-ins bakery have add-ins so remember drinks have some type of atoms food have some type beans have another so we can have add-ins on per type so i wanted to put that into a separate macro and that macro is going to be right here called uh item add or update actually it's going to be called add-ins so add-in type so let's do that let's run the macro for that so we'll clean things up here with the code remove the additional spaces here and here i'm going to write under the end if i'm going to write add in option underscore update so i want to update the add in options run macro to update add ins and options i'm calling them add ins and options okay i also want to add or item add or update item add or update so i want to save the item and what that's going to do is going to run a macro basically when we select something i want it automatically added to here automatic so we don't need to add any more and then any options will be added under that if we change the size it'll be changed automatically so another macro is going to add it to this list this receipt here and that's going to be called uh item add or update so we can either add it to the list or it can update it to the list basically it's been saved so that's exactly what we're going to do here so it's called item run macro run macro to add or update item on order received okay now once we have that so we're going to turn on application screen updating true that's it for that macro we've got that covered and we don't need to do anything else so clearing that okay so now item add or update that's the next macro that i want to write remember that's the one that's simply going to add it to the receipt automatically and now remember every time we add an item i want the row that's associated to go in b12 that's why it's important to clear it out every time we change categories every time we update the groups we're always clearing out b12 when we add an item i want to put whatever row that's been put there i want to put that directly inside b12 so the first thing we need to do is look is b12 empty if it's empty we know it's a brand new item if it's not we need to update the existing item so we're going to check on that so for item add or update we're going to check that out all right so I'm focusing on that same sheet with coffee pos first thing what i want to do is i want to look inside b12 if dot range b12 dot value equals empty then it's a new item else existing item update okay and then we're going to close it off with the end if 
Okay, so once inside there, what do we need to do for a new item? Well, I want to set the new item row. So that item row is going to be equal to. Now, it's a little bit tricky. We can't use a single column because I've got add-ins going in this column and I've got items going in this column. So what I want to do is I want to look in both columns and determine what the last row is. So we're going to use the find command for that. So to do that, we're going to talk about dot range. M12 is going to be our first possible row with data. That's going to be through N and then we'll just do a larger 999 dot find we're going to look for find what are you finding i'm finding anything so we're going to use the wild card for that which is the asterisk there i'm going to look in excel values excel whole and also i want to look in excel by rows i want to look in the rows and i want to look in the previous previous because i want the row up so and what i want to do is i want to look for that row what is the row with value and i want to add one because i want the next available row so we're going to call this the first available row okay so we have that so that's going to get us our first available row we'll be using this a few times okay next up what i want to do is i want to set b12 to that dot range b12 dot value equals the item row set item row however if it's if b12 is currently has a value in it i just want to put that in that variable so the item row equals whatever's in b12 existing item row now that we have the item row whether it's new or existing we can continue on what i want to do is i want to check to see if it's got an item name what is an i11 as long as it's not empty if dot range what is it here take a look here i11 is right here size i11 is the size so i want to take a look at the size first if dot range dot i11 i11 looks like the same making sure make sure i got that right i111 okay there we go dot value does not equal empty meaning it's a drink so it has a size associated with it then the item name is going to be equal to i want to basically what i want to do is either if there's a size that's associated with this i want to combine the item name and the size together if it's not like a bakery item then i just want to use the item name alone so basically i'm taking the item name and the size and putting it together so to do that i'm going to set that item name equal to whatever's in i10 dot range i10 which is actually the item name dot value and, and then we'll put quotation mark space a dash a space and again and a dash and of course that uh, value located in i11 so that size that's located in i11 so we're going to copy this and place it here else the item name is simply just what's in located in i10 the item name is simply equal to this and nothing else just the item name so for food or coffee there's no size associated with that so it's just what's located in i10 okay so that's going to set the item name set and it could include the size set item name okay so once we've set that item name i want to put that item name directly in column m in column m or whatever row here so i'm going to take that on so dot range m and the item row dot value equals the item name okay i also want to set the item price dot range that's going to be located in o and the item row item row dot value equals that item price where's that price located it's located in k11 dot range k11 is where that item price is dot value item price okay very good so we've got the item price here and also we can see we want to make sure that the price is changing here as we select it okay we still need to assign the macros to the size change we assigned it to this but we need to make sure we're assigning it to the backs as well and of course we need to make sure that they update the price based on this so we already checked that out small we know that the price is going to update based on that we just want to make sure that it updates here as well inside b11 when we select the size so we've got a few things to do on that okay lastly every time we add an item we've got a footer group that we still need to build out now the footer group is a bunch of shapes that are going to show the total subtotals and all that we're going to build that now but i want to make sure that we write that macro in because every time we add that item i want to update that footer group and you'll see that set footer group we're going to build that macro group so this update footer group position we're going to build that footer group right now okay footer group is simply a collection of shapes they're going to help us show the totals so let's take a look at that right now so it's going to put it going to position that down here we're going to insert a shape here we're going to use a text box here so basic text box and we'll keep the borders for now but we'll eventually uh, erase them so i want several different shapes within this group the first is i want to i have a subtotal so they're going to put we're going to give it that subtotal amount so where's that subtotal located it's going to be equal to 
whatever subtotals here. So great. So now what I want to do is I'm going to update this. I'm going to control one here. I'm going to update the text options here because I don't want so many uh, margins here for that. So left margin we can remove, right margin, I'm just going to remove all the margins. That's okay because the borders are not going to be shown. So I'm going to put that in the right justify that. I'm going to put that in the middle. And that's where exactly where I want that. So it's going to be about right here. We'll keep the borders on for now, but eventually we won't use them. So I'm going to duplicate that control D and I'm going to bring it down here and we're going to set the height on these probably to about 0.2. So 0.2 should be sufficient and that's going to, okay. So now uh, once that's going to be about the same as the row. So how do we determine that? We want it about the same height as the existing row. So I'm using that 0.2. Okay, so this one is going to be our tax, right? I want to know what tax we're paying on that. So the second one's going to be tax. So our tax, where's our tax located? It's located inside R9. So that's the next one. So we're going to link it. And then I want the total. So we're going to duplicate that one more time here. And in this one, I'm going to put it in R10. R10 is located where our order total is. Next up, I want to know the total paid. So I'm going to duplicate this one more. Where's our total paid? Our total paid is going to be located in B18. So we're going to set that to B18 because our total paid, our formatted total paid is located right here. And I'll show you why this one total paid is not formatted. It has to do with these numbers here. So if we know our total paid, I also want to know what is our change. So I'm going to duplicate that one more. This one, our change is going to be located directly here inside R13. So we can do that. Okay, so now we have everything just the way we like it as far as the look. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that these are lined up accordingly, centered. They look good. I don't think they need to be that big. The shape format, the width can be a little bit less. We'll set that to one. Okay, so of course we do want it moved over. I want it to be displayed right under these here. Of course, we need to set the names for that. So we're going to show them right about here should be sufficient okay so what else do i want to show i want some text boxes i'm going to duplicate one of these and make some changes on that so now we've got text boxes so what do we want to show in here i'm going to clear out the formula this one won't have a formula i will left justify this here so going in the left justify that and we're going to put subtotal in here this one's going to be called subtotal and we're going to make that bold so subtotal so subtotal we'll make it all bold actually so so once we have our subtotal and we can get rid of that dollar sign i also want to know the tax now the tax basically is remember we have a tax string here it's built up here this is where i want that tax string to appear we created it, but I want it linked to that. So I'm going to duplicate that using control D and this one, I'm going to link exactly to that tax string cell here, right? Located here. Perfect. So that way we have a dynamic tax. The reason that being is if the tax changes to 8%, then I want that automatically to be changed there. So you see now it's 8%. We're going to format that probably use the extra zeros on that 0 .00, 0 0.00 if we want two of them to show up. Okay. That looks pretty good. I like that. Whoa, way too much. Okay. That looks good. Perfect. Just the way I want it. So we'll add the two zeros onto the end of that. Now, what else do we need to do? Well, I'm going to duplicate that. This one, this one is going to be our total. So we're going to just clear that out. It's just a text range. We're going to call this total. So just adding total here. Perfect. We also want to duplicate that, adding one more for total paid and another one for change. So duplicate twice, total paid, and then change. And we'll line those up accordingly. This one's going to be total paid. And what we want to do is group them all together and give that group a name, total paid. And lastly, we want to know the change. Okay, perfect. So I like the way that looks, at least for our total range. And then I'm going to just make this, they look pretty good. I'm gonna make sure that these equal the bottoms here so that everything gets lined up accordingly. Okay, so we'll line up the middles there. That looks good. And then also the tops here and then lining that up. Okay, so now what we wanna do, I just wanna add in a few more things actually. One that says, thank you for your business. And then maybe one that says the date and time. So let's line these up here and then we can line them up on the left. They should all be sized the same as well to make sure, perfect. And then I wanna distribute them evenly accordingly. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now what else do we want to do? I wanna add in, thank you for your business. So I'm gonna duplicate that here. And then this one's gonna be centered. So we're gonna add this to the center. And it's going to be called thank you for your business we could probably make this dynamic too using like in the admin screen using the uh, call, uh, receipt name or something thank thank you for your business all right so i'm going to bring this over here i want to make this about the width of the receipt if you only see two you want to zoom in so you can see all three so you can add it there I'm going to center this accordingly making sure it's about the equal distance just so we can fit in all text and then here we're going to italicize this we'll bold everything i want to duplicate that here 
and I want to use one for the current time, the time and date of the receipt. Now we have that time and date of the existing receipt. We've got that tied to a specific cell and that's going to be located directly inside B19. So I'm going to put it just at any date now equals now. And then what I don't really want a formula in here. I just want the values for now. And so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste the values right in here too, because I really don't want the formulas. VBA is going to take care of that, but I do want to see it on the receipt. So equals here, and I'm just going to place it directly in here. Okay. So I like that. Let's zoom in so we can see it's a little bit too small. Okay. So very good. So this is what's called our footer. And I'm going to bring these over here a little bit so that we can see our footer. So you can use our selection here and we're going to select all the shapes and I'm just going to bring these over a little bit to the left. All right. Everything's looking good so now what i want to do is i want to remove the borders i don't really want to see any borders so we're going to go into the home or shape format here and then the shape outline and then no outline on that okay very good so what i want to do now is group them all together and we're going to give it a very specific group and i also want to make sure that everything's bolded in here i actually want to add some more lines to that. so let me ungroup that i want to add a little bit of a few lines one for the above so i'm going to insert and those lines are going to be part of the group too shapes here line so i want to add a small dotted line to separate these i'm just going to add it right up in, about in here and uh, we'll bring it up here i'm going to zoom in so we can make sure that it's straight and then we'll zoom in okay so i like the way that that looks here bringing it down a little bit now what we want to do is we want to color it accordingly we can use Control one and to see the line and so when we take a look inside this line what type of a line we're going to have we want to have a dash type. We'll use this dash type here, and I'm gonna use the color of black, and we wanna make sure it's a little bit thicker here, of course, so we wanna increase the width of that line. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like the way that that looks. Now I'm going to, actually, I wanna duplicate that line, and I wanna bring it down here. I wanna separate the total and the total paid, except this particular line, I'm gonna use a thick, we're not gonna use a solid line on that. Okay, so that separates the total paid and the change. Things will look good. Now we can ready to group it. Okay, that looks good. I like the way that that looks. So it's all grouped together on the sheet. So the idea is this group here is going to move down. We call it a floating footer and it floats. It moves down as we add items. So we're going to give it a very distinct name. And the name of that group is called footer group. So we're going to put it in here called footer group group. Thanks for sticking with us on these really long trainings. I hope you really enjoyed this. I work really hard and I love bringing these to you. If you don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you click the like button below. That is going to really help us out. Okay. It's called footer group and a macro will take care of the positioning so we don't have to worry about that. And that uh, looks good. Okay. I like the way that that looks. And now that we have it, we can then continue on. So saving our work, always save frequently. And we continue and see what the next macro. Now the next macro is called add in option update. And that is going to run through all the add-in items and then it's either going to delete it or it's going to update them accordingly. So let's focus on that because based on those item types, we need to add or update the op options inside these items, inside the add-ons here. So we're going to do that right now. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is go into with the coffee POS inside there. We're going to for each item shape in. So you see that we have a lot of the repetitions here. Next item shape. That's going to help you learn these techniques much faster because a lot of them are the same on air resume next and on air go to zero when we're deleting or updating more than one on air resume next here on air go to zero here. Okay. So now that we next up, what do we want to do? Well, the first thing I, what I want to do is I want to check if it's called adding item. I want to delete it. So if in string item shape dot name add in item so that's what i'm looking for so if it's greater than zero then what do we want to do i want to delete the shape we will recreate them so it's no problem item shape dot delete delete and the reason we want to delete these shapes is because we don't know how many add-ins there will be up to 10 we can add in so delete add in shape so we want to and i also want to delete any pictures that's associated with that so I'm just going to copy this and we're going to update it for pictures. Add-ins have pictures as well. They're going to be called add-in picks. Again, remember the same number of strings. Look at that same string add-in pick. Now that might both have the name number strings. And we're going to delete add-in picture. Okay. So now that we've deleted it, now what we can do is loop through the create a brand new add-in shape and new add-in pictures based on the number of add-ins. And we're going to go over that right now. So that's all we're going to do is loop through that and we can end with. Now we're going to focus on the add-ins sheet so with and i'll show you what we're gonna do with 
add-ins, making sure that we have the name right, which we do. Okay, so again, I wanna run an advanced filter. Here's our add-ins. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna look at all the add-ins for drinks, which is here, and I wanna return those results right here. These are all the add-ins that are associated with drinks, add-ins or options. And of course, it's linked, our criteria is linked directly to B8. If we remember, B8, we have our type here, our selected item type is here. So it's linked to B8, so we automatically know. That means if we choose a bakery item, it's automatically going to change to, a, we select a bakery item, it's, we haven't finished this. Set footer group, well, we did define the name here. Mm, we'll fix that in a second. There's a set footer, oh, too many O's here, probably, because I there's nothing in the macro, but the name is correct. Okay, so that's good. So basically, when we do that, we want to make sure, if you see now what we're gonna do is run food. So now you see it's based on food. So if we select a drink, I wanna know all the add-ins associated with the drinks. So add-ins here, we want these results to come here. I wanna determine the last row, run an advanced filter, and have the results come here. Inside the add-ins, that's what we're going to do. So the last row is equal to A, the last results, we're gonna to check to make sure that we have results less than four, we can exit the sub, there's gonna be no add-ins. If there are add-ins, we're gonna run an advanced filter, and that advanced filter is going to be based on what data? We're gonna go from A through E, so A3 through E, the criteria is gonna be J2 through J3, J2 through J3. And don't forget, you can support this channel on our Patreon. Patreon, I'll have a lot more. I wanna hear your ideas. I wanna hear your comments. What would you like me to add? You want me to add a feature to this? You want me to fix something or you want me to focus? Or would you maybe like that beautiful PDF codebook that's gonna be included? That's all on our Patreon platform. So I hope you'll join us there on Patreon. All right, cool. So our results are gonna come from N2 through P. So N2 through P2, that's where we want the results. And I wanna determine the last results row. Last results row is gonna be based on column P. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through those results. If last results row are less than three, we can exit the sub out. If they're not, we can then continue on. So if we're gonna set the initial left position. So basically what I wanna do, left position, is I want to build these add-ins. I want these add-ins to appear here. So we need to set that initial left position. That first initial left position is gonna be based on column H. So this is where I want it to go and a little bit over that. So maybe H uh, a little bit uh, above that, adding three on that RFP. So we're gonna set that initial left position right there. All right, so continuing on, let's set that initial left position is equal to coffee POS, remember we're on a different sheet, dot range, based on column H through H dot left. Maybe we can move it over a little bit, but I think set initial left position. Okay, so once we have that, I also wanna set the top position. The top position equal to also, it's gonna be based on this time, what is gonna be based on a specific row, 16. Let's do coffee POS dot range based on row 16. So we can do 16 colon colon 16, oops, 16 dot top position. So I wanna to set top initial top position. I know this is a lot of features, but it's so great. You can learn so much when you follow these trainings. So, cause there's so many gems in here. So the top position, so now what I wanna do is I know the top position. I wanna get ready to run our loop for the result row equals three to last result row. Okay, next result, closing our loop. Okay, so inside that loop, what do I wanna do? I want, I've got all that information here. I wanna bring it into some variables. Here's the information and we want the add-in ID, the item name and the picture. So those three I wanna put inside some variables. So add in ID is equal to dot range, whatever is located in column N and the result row. Okay, so that's the add in ID. Remember each add in ID has it. Okay, so we can copy that. Next up, I wanna know the add in name. So we'll do add in name is equal to whatever's located add in name and that's gonna be in column Oh, lastly, we need to put that picture in. That picture is gonna be called pick name and it's gonna be located in, con in column P. Okay, I also wanna set the folder. I think we need to set the folder up here for those pictures. I'm gonna do that just one more time here. Let's do it right up here. Pick folder equals, and then inside the brackets, picture folder. Okay, all right, I like that. Just to make sure we've got that, we could also set that as public too. Picture name, now I wanna know the coffee POS. We're gonna do that shape first, dot shape. So basically what we're gonna do is gonna take that shape that we have here, this shape, we're gonna duplicate it. We're gonna position it right here. We're gonna put in a few columns and have those add-ins appear there. So the picture shapes dot sample, the name of that shape is called sample items. You see it in the upper left. 
dot duplicate dot name we're giving it a unique name is equal to what it's going to be equal to add in item and the unique id add in that's why we always have an id add in id okay so now that we've duplicated it we can copy this and we're going to focus on just that shape to position it dot shapes oh so i gotta call it coffee call it the sheet again coffee pos dot shapes this shapes and we're going to work with it so we're going to add in the width so with that and i'm going to bring that back up here focusing on just that shape what are we going to do with it and then closing the parentheses here okay so now double quotes again get rid of that once we have that we're going to set that top position the top position top equals the top position set top position and it's almost exactly what we did before right almost remember we added the mod before using the mod we placed it on here so we can do exactly the same thing that we did up here so i'm going to copy that right here this is where it's at so what i want to do is i want to look through this and i'm just going to copy this here and then we can update it according because we don't need to redo it all again so we're going to put it in the admin although the locations are slightly different but we can add it in there okay so the top position we've already set now if the result mod to even rows column and this time it's going to be we're going to use a different column we use just second column here second column sufficient so if it's in the second column we're going to update the left position and the left position this time is going to be based on column j so it's either going to be h or j so those are the columns so this time we're going to use it in column j and that's where the second column is going to go inside column j and then we can add three onto that i don't need that that much okay so we also want to update the top position is the top position plus let's do just 60 okay that's re uh we're going to update the top position else odd rows first column of course it's not column e which is actually column h so we're going to set the left position is going to equal the left position reset the left position so reset the left position okay so the item width is going to be what we'll set it to let's say 100 here the height we'll set that to 55 the text frame it's going to be of course this is the add-in name we're going to be called add-in name and then what do we have here i want to know the macro that's going to run out it's going to be called add-in select not item select add-in select okay very good so we've got that now we can just close that with statement and now what we want to do is that's for the shape so we've created the shape but now we want to focus on the picture so again let's let's uh copy this and paste it we've got the picture path and we've set it a few other things we can do that right here i'm just going to copy this here and then we're going to paste it and we're going to make those updates a little bit quicker okay so scrolling down right here so we're going to set the picture path picture folder and picture name that's it that's going to be the same the checking to make sure that we have it we're going to insert the picture it's not going to be we're going to change the name of that it's going to be called add in picture we want to make sure that the name is the same one that we're deleting in the top of this macro we're deleting something called add in picture so that's the same name that we want to use when we add it so picture size add in picture and what we also want to add in the name so add an id so we're going to re redo we don't need the uh, underscore there and this one's going to change to pick to add in add an id okay create name and picture perfect create ads use add in so that's going to create the atom but then what we want to do is we want to again copy this to make sure that we have it perfectly focusing on just that one just that add-in picture so now add an id here make sure we got id here okay so we're going to lock the aspect ratio that's normal if the width and the height we're going to set them to let's say 40 a little bit smaller and we have little less space here and 36 on this now what i want to do is i want to set the left based on the add-in item and the add-in id so let's copy that up here to make sure that we got it correct once we create these shapes here this shape here i want to base that picture center it inside that shape so we're going to base it on that shape here and move the double quotes here and we are going to also use the width of that so we want to make sure we know the width of that shape add an item the width divided by the width of the shape times two and the same thing the top position of that here plus let's say that should be fine plus a little bit uh the top position will add in two on that one okay so we set both the top and the left and on action is going to be add in select so we're going to use the same thing here on action is going to be add in select so when they select something that's the macro that we're going to run that's of course the that's in right here this macro right here that we're going to run okay so now we've added in the add in so we're going to go next result we're going to clean that up here to make sure we have everything okay so we're going to save our work always save our work before running macros so now if we select coffee and then go to no picture if there's no picture we need to skip down right about here no and just there we go so we have that so in case we want we need to add that that's important okay continuing on okay so let's take a look our pictures didn't show up we need to update the shapes in the top position 
but at least we have that. Okay, so we need to get those pictures. Let's take a look inside the pictures and see what else we need to do to get the pictures. And we also want to make sure we're inserting the picture path, add in a picture and ID. So we want to make sure that the picture folder and the picture name are correct. So, okay, let's take a look back at our code. On the pictures, pictures insert, remember we're on with add in sheet. So we need to call out the sheets when we're inserting the picture here. We need to make sure we're inserting it in the right sheet, which is the coffee POS. If we take a look at our add-in sheet, what do we find there? Look at the pictures there. Okay, we don't need that. Show all, all right, select all. So we can select all the pictures. We don't need them on the add-in sheet. So basically, we didn't call out the sheet, so we can select all those and then just delete them. Let's just make a few updates. I'm going to lower these. I want to make sure these pictures get added in. Okay, so to lower them, I'm going to set that top position here. I'm going to add a, a little bit, let's say plus three on, let's say plus three on that. And then moving down also, uh, we want to make sure that we've set the page. Page, right set the right sheet here here because we're inside added right so we do need to call out the right sheet here okay let's take a quick look at that selecting on everything and take a look all right so we've got the pictures and now we're going to update these and now i want to update these add-in buttons and we're going to write write a macro called add-in type select so i want to select these and add in the macro that's going to be associated with those all right so let's go back in the code here and we see we have drink size okay so we have first drink size select let's do that first let's write that then we'll do the add-in type select now the drink size select is relatively simple all we need to do is just set the size and so what is that size well what i want to do is i want to extract the text that's small from either the back end or the shape itself i want to extract small so what do we want to do is we want to remove the first nine characters from the name of the shape that called it so we can do that very easily so drink size select is going to be size equals to using replace application dot caller and we're going to use the left and i'm removing the first nine characters application dot caller and here we're going to and here we're going to remove the nine characters and we're going to replace them what are we replacing them with nothing that is going to extract the size okay so now what we can do is we can take that size and put it into b10 coffee pos dot range b10 dot value equals size okay so basically we're taking whatever size and we're putting it directly inside b10 once we do that this price is automatically going to update so if i change this to small you see the price is automatically going to update both here and here because this is connected to b10 so what then i want to do is i want to make an update if b12 b12 is our row if the row equals something i want to then update that with our selected item so let's take a look inside here and update that so we're going to focus on that so now that we've updated b10 what i want to do is i want to update the back size so this color i want to update to brown and then the rest go to light brown so we've done that already before so all we really need to do is just copy that copy the code that we have before and then update it so let's take a look at this code right here and then i'm going to scroll down to the macro that we're currently on and we're going to update the shapes based on that so this time we're not focused on category back but we are focused on back size and then underscore so again we're going to do back size and then instead of the category name we're going to do the size so this is going to change to size so that is all we need so basically it's going to take all of the back sizes it's going to go change them to light brown the selected size is going to change to that darker brown color okay so once we set that automatically what we want to do is i want to update the name and so basically if i've got a selected drink I want to update the size in other words if if the selected one you see it's 21 we see we're on order row 21 so what i want to do is i want to run the macro that's going to save this item again so it's going to change it to medium or small or big or whatever it is and it's also going to update the price so to do that we're going to check if dot range oh let's do coffee pos we haven't called out the sheet ring b12 dot value does not equal empty then what we are going to do we're going to item add or update and that's to say update item if there is an item selected so we want to update the size okay so let's take a look at that then this is the macro that we are going to tie to all of those shapes and all those pictures so it's going to be this one here this one here and this one here we're going to right click assign the macro to that pasting that in so when we select that drink size so now you see here it's small 375 here it's large 540 so you see that this updates automatically 
as we change it. So you can see medium, small. So now the drink size automatically changes based on that. Okay, very good. So that's really a cool macro. Next up, I want to write a macro called adding type select. And basically, when we make a selection on any of these types here, let's take a look at the names. It's called add in type four, add in type three. So what I want to do is I want to make basically do the same thing, color all of them light, the selected one I want to color to darker brown. And I also want to take whatever the text is in here and I want to put it directly inside B13. So it's relatively easy macro. That's called add in type select. It is that macro that we're going to assign to those buttons, making sure that we take copy these here and then we're going to it to those buttons there so we're going to hold down the control i had grouped these and then ungrouped them they want they should stay ungrouped assign the macro pasting that in and clicking ok all right so that's done we're going to save our work and then we're going to write this macro called add in type select so focusing on this again we're going to dimension here the type number it's going to be type one two three or four number as a string string is fine we don't need long in this case I was focusing on with coffee POS. Okay, first thing I want to do, I want to extract that type number. Type number based on something they select equals replace. This time it's going to be relatively easy. Relatively easy. We're going to take the application dot caller. What am I going to replace? I'm going to remove something. Add in type comma double quotes. So what is this going to do? It's going to basically take from the name of the shape. It's going to take app, app, add in type and it's going to replace it with nothing. What's it going to leave us with? It's going to leave us with the number one. It's going to leave us with the number two number three or number four and that's very important because i'm going to know which one has been selected so once we have it we know the type number i want to take that again i want to do something exactly similar to this right here so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste that directly in here okay and then we're going to tab this in a little bit now but instead of it's this we're going to use add in type this is the text that we're going to be changing if it contains add in type we are going to color it brown then if it contains add in type and the type number we're going to give it the darker brown so re very very simple and also what i want to do inside b13 b13 should take on whatever text is in this box so whatever text is there i want to put that directly inside b13 so we can do that dot range b13 dot value equals and where are we going to find it we know it's going to be this one right here this shape number add in type here copy this paste it in here dot text frame two dot text range dot text so that's going to do that. that's all we need to do that's going to set the type set the type okay very good so when we set the type that's all we need to do nothing more than that and then we're going to save our work so let's take a look at this setting the type colors it and make sure so here no here add light and extra perfect that's all we want to do okay next up when we select one so what do we want to happen when we add in these add-ins i want to take the word extra whatever it is no add light or extra i want to combine it with the text of this and i want to put it on the first available row so this will move down and i'm going to put it right here in column n any prices that are associated with that add-in will go here how do we know that there's a price? And I also want to take the ID of that add-in. I don't want to put it directly in 14. That's important because it's going to tell us what row and it's going to tell us what price that are both calculated. So that's going to go in here. So here's how we are going to do that. It's going to be called add-in select. That is the macro that we have already assigned here inside both the picture and the shape. So we've already assigned the macro. So all we need to do is just write the macro now. It's called add and select. So we're going to focus on the coffee with coffee POS. Okay, next up, I want to make sure that we want to know if B12, right? If we're selecting one of these things, we need to have an actual, there has to be an item in B12. If there's no item selected, we can't add anything to an, it has to be an original item that we're actually adding to. So we want to make sure that B12 contains a value. If dot range B12 dot value equals empty, the you need more vitamins oh different b12 okay then we want to make sure that we have a value so message box please make sure to add an item before selecting an add-in or option okay sometimes you call them options so that's and exit sub okay so we can exit out without b12 so i do want to know add in so i want to set the add an id remember the id is very important i've got to take that id and i got to place it directly 
inside B14. How do I extract that ID? If I take a look here and I remove the first eight characters, it's going to leave me with that ID. Remember, the ID came directly from here. We added it on. Also, if they select on the back of the shape, I'm also going to take the first eight characters here and I'm going to nine characters, actually nine characters. That's going to leave me with that at an ID and I'll take that ID at an ID. I'm going to place it directly inside of B14. So that's exactly what we're going to do right now. That add in ID is equal to replace application caller. And then, of course, we're going to use the left left of what nine characters application dot caller rep somebody asked me how i can do these so quick repetition i do the same thing over and over again if it gets boring good because that's how you learn so you know it, that's how we all learn so so this is going to be our add-in id okay very good so that repetition will help your memory so now i'm going to take that id and put it directly inside cell b14 so now all we need to do is write the code dot range b14 dot value equals add in id okay that'll automatically generate any the price associated with that now all we need to do is add it in so we're going to take that i also want to take again just like we did before whatever atom we've selected i want to color it brown so again we're going to copy the same thing again let's, let's escape out of there whatever cell we're in copy this and of course we're going to make the updates to the shape we know that uh, the shape is always going to contain the words what it's going to contain here we say add in item so we know if it's going to take add in item so we're going to update this to add in item anything with add in item we're going to color it light brown then add in item and of course the item add an id so the add in id we're going to give it that dark brown add in id okay very good that's going to set the dark brown so how easy it is once we do the same thing again again okay so next up i need to determine exactly what row we're going to be placing and now we already have a formula for the item row and we used that when we were adding or updating it was this right here so i'm going to get the first available row i'm just going to copy that bring it down here and that's going to put it directly inside our item row so we're going to set that item row once we have that item row we can then place the added name inside column n so we're going to use this dot range and the item row dot value what's going to go in there well i'm going to use whatever's inside b13 take a look in b13 because we need to add is it extra is it no is it you know light or is it uh, add so we need to put this in first so b13 whatever's in b13 is going to go in first equals dot range b13 now i don't want to put a space in there b13 dot value and a space so and and what else i also want to know what about this here this shape here whatever the text is in this shape and here dot tech dot text frame two dot text dot text so basically the text of that shape we're going to be placing in so that means right the text of this ice or expression shot or ice cream shot the text of that shape is going to go directly inside here we're going to put it in column n okay next up i want to know if there's any price associated with that so we need to put that in and where's that going to go that's going to go in column o and the item row so we can change this to o and where's that price going to come from it's going to come directly from here if any inside b16 so it's going to be equal to dot range b16 okay dot value and that's going to be the price okay and also we need to run the macro that's going to set the footer group we haven't created that we haven't updated that macro yet but i do want to put that macro in here so once we create it it'll be automatically updated and that's the that's going to lower that footer about that macro so we're going to place that right here uh, set footer group okay so saving our work so far now what we want to do we've got a, a here we've got a, a coffee already selected so if i say add let's say caramel syrup we want it okay here it's already done nice so it looks good add an ice cream scoop and maybe we want uh, no sugar so lots of caramel but no sugar that doesn't make sense okay so great and also if it's no i want to make sure that the price doesn't add a price so notice i want to add something in here i don't want to just index this but i do want to update that price on that so i don't want to be charged if it's no so let's do something like uh if i'm going to add an additional if this is no we certainly don't want to charge for something if we're taking it away equals no then the price is going to automatically be zero because i don't think you should charge if you're not including something then set it to zero otherwise then use this and then we'll just close that loop right here that it, with the parentheses okay so that means if no so let's say something like uh caramel syrup right if it's no caramel syrup we want to make sure not to charge it but if we're adding caramel syrup we want to make sure to charge it so you see the difference here 
uh, no syrup, zero, adding it is 50 cents, perfect. Or light or extra, probably 50 cents too. Okay, good, so I really like the way that that's looking. We've got that set up now, let's update this. And what else do we have? Well, now what we do, that's pretty much it for all the features on the screen. Now we're just gonna update the order. So we're gonna go into the order module. I don't have very many macros and then we'll be done with this. So we're gonna look in the order. Remember, this is the sample one here. So we're gonna close it up. We're only focused on this. So we've got new order, just a few macros to write on this. The first thing is new order. When does that happen? When I select next order, I want new order to be, I want basically this to be saved and cleared. That's it. So that's all that we're going to happen on new order. So let's take a look inside that and then order new. So we've got dimensions and variables already. So when we have a new order, we're just simply going to clear a few things out. So with coffee POS, I want to clear some fields out dot range and we'll take a look. Let's bring this over here so we can see some of the fields that we're going to be clearing out and bringing this down a little bit. Okay. So some of those are R, uh, R3, R3 is that search field. I want to, want to clear that search field out. So that's important. R3, also R12, B12, R12 is the paid amount. B12 is a selected row. So we need that row done. M13 all the way through P9999. That is our items here. So those are all P is going to be, we're going to have a database row here. It'll be hidden. So I want to clear out all the way from M13 all the way down. So we need to clear that out and we're going to clear those contents, clear contents. Okay. So once we've cleared the contents, so it's clear, it's called a clear order fields. Also, what I want to do is I want to set the next order ID. Now we know that using the max formula, we've already got the order ID here and I've got the, the order ID. I'm going to make sure it's equal to, I want to set this order ID equal to whatever is here. So we've got the order ID here. The next order ID is B3. I'm going to take whatever values inside of B5 and I'm going to put it directly inside of B3. So we can do that inside our code dot range B3 dot value equals dot range B5 dot value set next order ID. Okay, so now once we set the next order ID, I also want to set the default location. Remember, sometimes we have a default location. It's right here located in R7, uh, but it's going to come directly from whatever default location is right here inside E11. So we're just going to add that into the code here. So dot range R11 is, excuse me, R7 dot value is equal to admin dot range E11. E11 is where that located and then dot value and we'll set that as the location die in or take away basically and next up i also want to set the default payment type so i'm just going to copy this here and then we're going to update the ranges here and then we're going to call this default payment type so what is that default payment type that default payment type is going to be based right here oops this is not correct here let's see oh i think we're gonna oh, e11 okay so i want to set this up uh cash e10 is where it's going to come from so that's where it's going to come from the default payment type and, and that default payment type is going to go directly inside right here payment type here located in r11 so we'll set that default payment type r11 okay so once we have the default payment type i want to update the footer group again we're going to do set footer group uh and then we're going to update footer position. It's going to go higher, right? If it's a new order and there's no items, it's going to go right up here. So that's a macro we're going to write. So basically, I want this footer to move all the way up to about like here. Okay, we're going to write that macro momentarily. Next up, so that's it for uh, our new order. That's all we need to do for new order. Next up, save or update. If I want to save an order or update an order, this is the macro that we're going to write. So with the coffee POS, and we're going to determine the last row. Again, the last row is this one we've done here. Here, same thing here, right here, except that this time I'm going to call it last row. It's a little bit more so because it's the last row. So I'm going to copy this here, and we're going to call this the last Last row. I'm going to paste it directly inside here, except this time we're going to call it last row. I like that a little bit better. Let's do equals. And then we'll just call, instead of the first available row, we'll do the last row. So that means, that's important because I need to loop through all the rows with values and make sure to save everything. Okay, so if the last row is less than 13, that means there's no data. Then let the user know. Message box, please add any item to save this order. We don't want to save an order with no items. Exit. So assuming that there are items, we can move on. I want to know if it's a new order order or it's an existing order. How would we know that? Well, if it's a new order, this will be empty. So if I change this to, uh, let's say nine, you see that or eight, that there's no order associated with that. Why is that? Because I only have two orders saved. So anything beyond that, and when I look here at the order row, there's no order row that's associated. So I know already that that is going to be a new order. So 
let's go ahead and write some code for that if dot range b4 dot value equals empty then it's a new order else existing order and if okay now next up so what if it's a new order if it's a new order i need to set an order row the first available row inside my order screen orders dot range a 9999 dot end xl up dot row plus one that's the first available row first available row okay orders dot range now put that order id there a and order row dot value equals what the order id whatever is located in b3 equals dot range b3 that's going to be that first uh order id dot value set that order id okay but what if it's an existing all we need to do is set the order row based on what is located in b4 so that order row is equal to whatever's in b4 existing order we just need to update that order row okay great so what do we need to do we don't have any data mapping so basically i just need to write a few lines of code that are going to save the information that i want what do i want saved i want the date the location the total and whether it's paid or not so i want all that information here okay so to do that we're just going to add that information in considering we can all save it just pretty much easy just four four lines of code so we're going to go ahead and do that right now that's going to be regardless whether it is an existing or new orders dot range b we're going to start and the order row dot value is equal to i want to save the time and date so we'll just use now current time and date current time and date okay so now what do we want let's just copy we've got to put information in c in d and in e so we're going to update the range here here and and here okay so what's going to go in column c c is the location where's that going to come from that's going to come directly from take a look at the location r7 so we just need to update that to r7 and set that as the location okay so once we have that we can just copy and paste and then we can update the ranges accordingly so inside the next one column d we are going to put the order total and lastly the paid amount is going to go in column e paid amount okay that order total is going to come directly from here located in r10 so we're going to place that r10 and then the paid amount we will have in uh, r let's go ahead and put it in r12 okay all right so r12 is going to take on the paid amount so that's it for as far as the main order but now we really need to add or update the item so uh add or update uh, order items so to do that we're going to focus on a loop so for the order item row is going to equal to 13 to the last row that's a loop next ooh, next or order item row okay so once we are in that order we need to set the database row now if it's been saved already i'm going to place that database row in column p here so i'm going to look in p if it's empty it has not been added now that order item is going to be saved in this database so we see we've got the item type information the the row on the order and the database row so this is where we want to save it here so here's what we're going to do to do that we're going to place it if it's empty we are going to use a new database row if it's not empty we're going to use whatever is here inside column p and that's exactly why we cleared out column p on the new item we wanted to make sure we cleared it out okay so for first that's the first thing we're going to do we're going to check that if dot range p and order item row dot value equals empty then what are we going to do it is a brand new else it's existing so else existing okay so we can extract that if it's existing the order row uh, let's put it in here item database row item database row is equal to whatever is located here in p okay i'm gonna place it right there okay existing database row existing database row okay if it's a new one we need to set the item database row is equal to order items the first available row here inside the order item so we're going to plus one that's the first available row so we have that i also want to take that and i want to put it that brand new database row and i want to put it directly inside p so now it has a value it's going to take on that item database row okay set database row inside column p once we have both of those i want to put the order id i want to take that and put it inside column a so it's going to be order 
items dot range a and the item database only for new items row dot value is equal to where's that uh that order id is located in b3 dot range b3 dot value okay so for new items we're going to take the order id order id and we're going to place it right there okay that looks good that's good for all the new items but i've got two more things if we take a look inside the order items here i also want to place the row and the database row then for the item name type and amount are going to be regardless if it's new or existing so let's put in column e and f as well that's going to be the row and the database row so i'm just simply going to copy this here and then we're going to paste it below one more time two more times and that's going to be column e and column f f is going to take on the formula equals and that formula is going to be that equals row so it's going to take on the row okay and then set database row then what we want to do inside e is i'm going to put in that item order item row i want to know the row the order order item row okay great so now regardless if it is for new or existing we want to add information in b c and d so b is going to take on the item type c is going to take on the item name and d is going to take on the amount so b c and d this is going to be so the name where's the name coming from it's coming from well we don't know is it coming from m or is it coming from n right so we don't know exactly where the name is right the name could be coming from column m or column n if it's an idea so we need to know if m is empty use what's in n so we need to determine where the item name is coming from the price is always going to be in the column so we're going to run an if then statement and to determine that so we can do that and let's just set it up right here if we can use an if then dot range m and the order item row dot value does not equal empty then we can set b to whatever's in that then uh we can do else and then and if we'll build those out b is going to equal to what whatever's located here and we'll fix that up here then we're going to add it in here yeah the parentheses on here and here. okay so that's so basically but what if it is empty if it's empty we're going to put whatever's in n so i'm just going to copy this here and we'll put some names in here so this is going to be n so this would be an add-in or add-in so we're going to put an add-in add-in item or it's going to be here in a regular item regular item okay so we basically we're going to put in b is going to take on whatever's inside m or whatever's inside n okay i like that there you go and this is going to be for add-in items and regular item here okay very good so what about inside c well c is simply going to take on whatever's inside column o we want the name there so that's relatively easy let's take a look back in here shop items so order items here the amount is going we have in c we have the name b is the item type b is the item type i knew it was c c and then okay so b is the item type where's that item type going to come from that's relatively explanatory we can put that right here so we can go in order b that item type we see that it's coming directly from the item so we know it's an item i'm going to put that right here so here i want to know what the item type is so if it's inside m we know it's an item equals item and that's important because when we load it we need to do however if it's an add-in i want to put it as an add-in there we go add in so here we go add in that way we have both the item type item type so when we load it in we know we know that if it's an item we know to put it in column m if it's an add we know to put it in column n so we know when we load that order back in we know what column to place them in so it's very important okay this is going to take on d here so we want to know what's in d d is simply the price and that's going to come from o and that's going to come from column o so we just need to copy this here and put in o and put in the price so this is the price price is always going to have the same column okay and update this to column o okay very good so that's all we need for the saver update but i do want once we save or update it i want to clear everything out and put it new in so we're just going to add the item right here so new so i'm going to run macro to add new order so basically we're going to save it and clear out the fields all in one go okay saving our work so far and then it is this macro that we want to assign to that button called next order so i'm going to copy this we're going to go into the poc and it is this button here that we've already grouped we're going to right click that and we're going to assign the macro to that so we just assign it here and it's going to paste that in here clicking okay okay so this is going to be order three we've got information here and i probably should clear it all out okay so let's go ahead and we still didn't update the subtotal but that's okay so let's add a coffee here and we'll add a green tea here and then we'll here's the green tea and we'll add uh, no sugar onto that green tea 
okay and we also want to put in some fresh milk into that green tea and we'll do one more item a smoothie here and then we're going to go ahead and save it all right and we'll put some caramel add some caramel syrup into the smoothie okay so and we haven't wrote the macro that's going to update this but that's okay so then we're going to click next order and everything got cleared out so let's take a look inside our orders order number three takeaway 13 and the pay to six these are not formatted both but that's okay when they come back in there order items we have all of our order items here so i like that add and making sure that we've got the atom type this didn't this didn't come we didn't have an add -in. i'll double check on that but it looks okay maybe we added one extra row so i'll double check on this to see why it didn't come in okay so let's take a look and now what we want to do is we want to be able to load it when i select order number three here I want that order to come back inside here so that's called the next macro and that's going to be called the order load so let's take a look inside that and see we're going to focus on with so basically what we do you're going to search for that let's say they put in three here when they put in three here i want that order row to come in here you see it's based on that if this is a whole number and it's good and it's not empty i know it's a correct order id i can then take that order and i can place it directly inside b3 and then run the macro to load it so we're going to focus on the coffee with coffee pos this is one of my longer trainings if i need to make sure that b4 isn't empty if it is that means there's an incorrect order because we have to have a row dot range if you're still sticking with me i really appreciate it thank you so much let me know in the comments that you stuck with on the whole video equals empty then what do we want to do let the user know message box please enter a correct order id okay we're going to exit that sub okay next up we're going to set the order row based on whatever is located in b4 that's going to be our order row so order row equals b4 once we have the order row then we want to clear out associated fields so we're going to clear out not all the fields that we did when the add new but but a lot of them so i'm going to copy this here and then i'm going to bring it down here and clear out some fields okay so we have fields that we're going to be clearing out uh b12 and but not r12 we don't necessarily need that b12 is important that selected row the payment probably we could do that but that's going to load up anyways if there's any payment m13 we do need all these okay so that looks very good and then next up what we want to do is i want to set the value in b19 what do i want to set whatever's in b so now we have to fill in these fields so I want to take whatever's located in column B. I want to put that directly inside B19. So B19 is going to take on the date and time. Dot range B19 dot value equals orders dot range B and the order row dot value date and time. Okay. So next up, I also want to know the location and the paid amount. That's it. That's all I want to load in. So I'm going to copy this here, spell time correctly paste that in here once and then twice so now we're going to focus on r7 r7 is our location so we're going to put in location location is going to come directly from column c and then next up we want to focus on r12 r12 is that paid amount and then we're going to put that directly it's coming from column e e is the paid amount okay so everything else is calculated meaning uh, the total is calculated auto so we don't need we can skip the total because that's automated and so we're just going to bring that information here as d and that is our paid amount okay great that's it for the main information but what about the order items so now what we need to do is load order items so basically what i need to do is i need to run an advanced filter on these order items i need to know all the orders associated with order id 4 or whatever's located in b3 the results are going to be here and then we're just simply going to load the results we know the row based on the item type if it's an item it's going to go in column m if it's a uh, add in it's going to go in column n so that's how we know okay so we're going to bring those in so with order items i want to determine the last let's do last row last row equal that and then i also want to know last row is less than four we're going to exit the sub out we're going to run that advanced filter just as we always do and this can be based on a through f here a through f we can update that our criteria is in j2 through j3 so j2 through j3 we're copying it to range m through q so we're going to update this m through q don't forget if you do want to 
create these applications and learn how to sell them. I'm going to do all that in my mentorship course. It's a 132 hour masterclass and I teach you every step of the development process. And of course, I also teach you how to sell your own Excel based applications for passive income while I create an incredible accounting application. That's in the mentorship course. You won't want to miss that. Once we have the last row, we're going to determine the last row is equal to based on whatever's located in column M. So we're going to update that to M, making sure. If it's less than three, we can, we can exit. There are no, no orders then. So last results row is less than three. We can exit the sub. Then we're going to run a loop, assuming that we are. Do have data for the result row equals three to the last result row next close our loop oops next result row okay so what we have here is we're going to run that information so for the result row we're going to set the order item row that's the most important i need to know what row it's going in that's going to come from p equals dot range p and the result row p and the result row dot value so that's the order item row next up what i want to do is i want to determine is it an add-in or is it an item if dot range m and the result row dot value equals item then we know it's an item obviously Th then of course then we're going to add it in column m then else add in okay so what if it's in column m if it's in column m coffee pos i'm going to call it the sheet again dot range m and the order and the order item row dot value equals what whatever's in located equals in n in the result row dot range n and the result row dot value okay so basically that is going to be the item okay so the main item i'm going to put that here main item so what if it's not if it's an add-in i'm going to copy this else it's an add-in it's going to come directly from it's going to go in column n so Basically, let's take a quick look at this. If it's a main item, it's going in column M. If it's a uh, sub item or add in, it's going to go in column N. Okay, so continuing on. So we know that we're going to directly come from M. What about the amount there? So we can do the amount. So that's going to focus on add in. If it's an amount, what we need to do is just put that in column O. So we can copy this part here. Let's just copy all of this and then update that. So inside column O is where we're going to put that amount. And it's going to come directly from column O here. So it's O to O, relatively simple on that. Okay, that would be the amount or the price. Let's just call it amount for now. Okay, very good. So we've loaded up that information. And now what we want to do is we want to add in the information for the database row. Very important. I want to take this item row, what's in Q, and I want to put it in column P. So I'm going to put here inside column P, we're going to put whatever's in column P here. Okay. Perfect. We're going to call this the item database row. Okay, very, very good. Let's clean it up here, get rid of the spaces, and then we'll test it out. Okay, so clearing that out and clearing this out and the extra spaces here. Okay, so when do we want this to run? Saving. So I want this to run. Let's click on, I want to do order load. Now, when do we want it to run? I want to run this macro when the user makes a change to R three but not if it's empty so let's take a look inside that and that's going to be on the worksheet change so coffee pos we are going to run a macro called worksheet and this is going to be the change event so we don't need any selection change we can get rid of that so if you if the user makes if not intersection and i'll again based on r3 and range r3 is not empty then we want to do a few things what do i want to do well first i want to check to make sure that there is a row that b1 is correct right i want to make sure that if if it's empty that means it's an incorrect order number if range b1 dot value equals empty then let the user know message box please select enter a correct order number okay and then we can exit this up okay if it is correct what i want to do i want to take whatever's in r3 i want to place it directly inside so that correct order number that we know is correct i want to take that directly and put it in b3 so we can do that right now so range b3 dot value equals range r3 dot value set order number and i also want to clear out now i want to clear out range r3 now be very careful when you're making a change to r3 
And you want to make sure that this is empty because I'm clearing it out. I'm making a change to a cell inside the change event. So be careful with this. Otherwise, it could loop out. In other words, if I don't have this here and I clear it out, it's going to loop continuously and it'll probably crash. So if you get crashes, it's because of something like that. Range R. You could also uh, disable worksheet events too, which helps dot, dot clear cont. Okay. And then lastly, I want to run the macro. Run macro to load the order. Okay, great. Saving our work here. And then let's go ahead and test it out and see what that happens. Okay, we have no order in there, so I'm going to just double click here and enter that and see what we got. Okay, got one too many S's here, don't need that. Continuing on, and let's take a look inside. Oh, looks like the little, we gotta set the row, it looks like a little bit too row. So we wanna make sure that we're setting the rows, the ones that start at 13, so that's important. So if we take a look inside our, our, our order items here, we want to make sure that our item row is this queue, not P. So we want to make sure that our item, let's go ahead and take a look inside the order rows. Setting that order row, right, as we loop, loading those order items, it's got to be Q, right? The order item row is Q, not P. This is our database row, so very important. So now all we need to do is just run it again here, and it'll be at the top, which is where we want it. Okay, great. So it's looking good. I probably want to make it a little bit faster. Now what we want to do also is run the macro that's going to set that footer group. So we're going to put that in. So that's the last thing we want to do, set footer group. Okay, so we have that macro. It's going to be down here, right here. Probably let's place that up here. I'm going to put that up here. I want to do that now. Okay, so setting the footer group, relatively easy. So how do we do that? Well, it's rel I, what I want to do is I want to determine the last row. I want to get that item row. That's very, very important or the last row, either one is fine. I'm gonna copy this. That's the first thing we need. So with coffee, POS. I'm gonna determine the last row, and uh, but this last row, I wanna make sure that we're gonna set it up exactly right. So the last row, we're gonna add one. Now what I want to do is if the item row equals 13, then I'll do last row, let's do last row. Last row, last row row equals 13 then last row i just want to set the default the minimum last row equals 14. okay very very good so this is going to be the four for new orders just setting the minimum now what i want to do is set that footer group remember we've got a shape here group shape this is called footer group we're going to we want to place this i want to place the left position based on column m and i want to place that top position based on that last row called the footer group so we're going to place that right now so dot shapes footer group whoops footer group dot what is that top position so we'll do left position equals dot range m and the item row we could just do m m column m dot left that's sufficient for the left position and also for the top position i want to place that so what is the top position so we're going to place the top position here copy that but this time top position is going to be based on the last row dot range we can use m and the last row dot top plus let's say plus one let's take a look at that all right and see what that looks like all right so continuing on now we're just going to run that macro let's bring it down here i'm going to run that macro shrink it up here so i can watch it see where it positions itself i'm going to bring it down just off the position and check it out and see where it's positioned see if i like the position let's fix that dot top equals forgot the equals there okay continuing on Okay, uh, it looks pretty good. I want to, uh, it's pretty good there. Maybe one more pixel down. It's almost perfect. I think the top, maybe two maximum, but it's pretty good just the way it is. Okay, all right, I like that. That's looking really good. It's nice. Remember, this macro is going to run every time we update it. Every time we click next order, it's going to automatically update it. So now we can add, and it's going to add every time we add an item. I want to make sure that we're going to be updating it so we can add an item. So now as we add an item, see the footer groups moving down. That's exactly what I want. Even if we add something here, it's going to automatically move down. Okay, good. I really like the way that that's looking. Notice that footer is now moving down. All right, just a few more macros, not very much. So we're going to focus on the print now. That print's going to be tied to that print button, obviously, with coffee POS. Inside that, I want to set that, again, last row or item row, either one. We need that. That's important. So I'm going to copy this right here. And I'm going to paste it right down here, except this time what we need to do is we need to make sure that not only the last row, but we need to add additional for that because we need to compensate for that footer row. So we're going to change this to eight. So that last row is going to be that plus eight. Okay, so now what we want to do is I want to set the page setup. So dot 
page setup. And then what is that print range? I want to set the print area is going to be equal to what? Well, the first area, if we take a look at the first cell, it's going to be M3. So we know that the last one's going to be O and some of that. Oh, I forgot to show you this one. Sorry. This one is formatted. We do have our rows in here. I should general. Okay. So if we take a look inside, oh, I need to save it first, but I will, let's next go to next order. Okay. You see those now? Let me load that order in here. I want to show you something. So take a look. We have the database rows in here. I'll make that a little bit faster with applications loading a little bit slow. So these are the database rows that we place, but we want to hide those. So we're going to go into the home. This is, I had that already. More number formats. And then I'm just going to hide them using a custom format with two semicolons. If we have text in there, it'll be three semicolons, but it's just numbers. So that's it. That's all we need to do to hide them. Okay, great. So continuing on. So the print area is going to be at M3. So we're going to use quotation marks. It's a string. It's going to be M. And then three is going to be that first row. Using a colon, it's going to be all the way to, oops, colon here, all the way through O is our column. And what is that last row and the last row and last row so that is our page setup print area so once we have that all we need to do is just print it out so we can print out using this one and we take a look at some of the uh, options here from or to we don't need that we can keep those blank preview active printer will set true to our active printer print a file no collate print to ignore print areas and false okay so that's going to print it to our active printer for me it's Snagit is my active printer Okay, so that's pretty much it for the printout. We don't need anything else. So we're going to take this macro order print and I'm going to assign it to this button right here in the lower right. So we have a group already, so we can assign it uh, to the macro, pasting that in, clicking OK. Saving our work here, always saving it before running everything. And I'm going to click print order and we can see what happens. Order print, oh, problem, the formula. Okay, we can kind of get formula equals. Okay, no worries on that. All good. And then continuing on that, it's going to print out. It's printing it to my default printer. We'll take a quick look at it. And here we got a nice receipt. It's getting cut off here at the bottom, right? So I need to increase the row one or raise it either way. So let's take a look. I probably just raise this up a little bit here. It's a little bit low. So we could do two options, increase the row, but I'll probably raise this up. Okay, that should be sufficient. So now we've got a little bit raised up. Okay, very good. I like that. Now what we want to do is what's the next macro print? We're going to set the location. This is relatively easy. All I need to do is make sure that these are labeled. So this picture here, I want to make sure that I've labeled that. That means if they click the picture or if they click the button, I want to make sure it is the same. We're going to call it. So it's going to look for it. I want to make sure this says dining in as well, making sure dining in and i want to make sure also that the same thing for the uh takeaway here if i take a look at this group here i want to make sure that this also is named correctly so we have picture takeaway so i always want to make sure it's exactly the same so i'm going to copy this and paste in here so that means if they whatever they click on i want to take the name of what they've clicked on and i'm going to put it directly inside r7 so let's do that right now setting that location super simple so coffee POS dot range. We see it's R7 is the range R7 dot value is equal to what? Again, it's simply equal to the application dot caller name of the shape. So that means whether it's the so that's it. So set location, copy that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control, select both of these groups, assign the macro here, pasting that in set location. So if we take a look at takeaway, dining in, takeaway, whether they click on the icon or the shape. Perfect. Okay, that's all we need to do there. Okay, very good. What's next? Set the payment type. Also, just as easy. The payment type also very simpler. Very simple. We can do this. Copy this. Paste it in here. This time it's going to be R11. Okay, so we just want to make sure again. Let's just check our selection pane on these. I want to make sure that we have named them correctly. That's always important. So we're going to go into that selection pane and we're going to scroll down to the selection. And I want to make sure that we have both of these. The gift card, get credit card, cash, clear, making sure also on, I want the backgrounds as well. So cash, good, the background looks good on that. I'm gonna check in the background credit card and I'm checking the gift card. Okay, so they're all correct. Now all we need to do is hold down the control. In fact, maybe I'll ungroup these temporarily. We don't necessarily need them grouped. So I'm gonna ungroup this here, select that again and then ungroup it. So this is what I want to ungroup. And okay, so I'm going to then simply just select all of these here and then assign a macro. So sign that macro. And what is that called? That's called the payment type select. So 
set payment type or payment type here okay so now keep an eye out for the payment type here inside our cell r11 making sure that if i select payment type credit card gift card credit card perfect cash okay so that's working quite nicely okay very very good now what we want to do is we want to update the paid amount update the paid amount also relatively easy so what do we need to do here i'm going to copy this a little bit we're going to use this here but we're going to update a little bit so that paid amount is going to be based on r12 so we're going to focus on that now the r12 is what are we going to change but i also want to make sure that whatever's there doesn't get erased so we're going to use the current value whatever is there plus something plus what and we want to know the application coffee pos dot shapes application caller because i want the text application dot caller dot text frame dot text range dot text and that's going to be all except for the clear button right and the clear we don't want that's going to be different so dot text so that's it so let's take a look i want to assign that to let's take a look here i'm going to group these a little bit easier to assign the macros and then we'll do it individually so i'm going to group all these numbers to keep them from moving and grouping them together okay so i'm going to assign a macro to each one and then we'll make a change on the clear so n and this is going to be the update paid amount so here update paid amount click ok now perfect so for the paid amount for the clear we can write that all we're going to be doing is clearing whatever's in r12 so that's relatively easy so here clear paid amount just the clear contents dot clear contents okay very good so this macro update paid amount is only for that clear button so we're going to select on that one only and change that one and that's going to be called clear paid amount clicking okay okay so we see that there's no paid so what i want to do is i want to add we've got a 37 dollars bill i'm going to add that we paid 40.00 okay now keep in mind that this only works well when it is a text right so it's got to be a text that is why we are it's formatted as a text that's why another why we're using total paid in fact i should use that okay just update that 0.00, .00. i want that format okay so this is the format of one this is the text so that way we and let's try to clear it out now clear okay it works perfectly so pay four zero point let's say 72 72 here and our changes okay 344 clearing it out paying four zero 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 okay i like that that's working quite nicely all right let's take a quick look actually that is it for the macros let's double check to make sure i've filled in all the macros wow what an incredible training this was one of my longest and best i hope you've gotten so much we showed you how to automatically color shapes select categories i'll be making a few updates to this i want it a little bit faster also let me know what ideas you have we showed you how we can dynamically add sizes and update that we can create add-ins additions extras we also showed you how you can automatically load save and update orders very very cool it's been a really fantastic training thank you so much for joining us don't forget i want to see you on patreon we'll be making an update there so make sure you join us there so much to offer there on that platform thanks so much and we'll see you next week